tidbit. Focus! Focus! Come on, you piece of shit. A small piece of tasty food, a small and particularly interesting item of gossip and information. You know what? Listen, I'm running out of these, okay? They can't all be winners. We're going to be leaving some Discord servers right now. Let's go into my folder of shit I don't give a fuck about. All right, let's first step. The Lux Cash Advanced Music Production. They're all nonsense. <laughs> that's too rude. That's, that's not... They're, listen, they're all perfectly fine. It's just full of fucking normies, and none of them would be able to take my autism. Uh, they're, they're probably good at making music, though. The Subahibi Discord. Listen, when the fuck... Listen, I love Subahibi. Everyone knows about me. One thing about me, Subahibi, love that shit. Right? So I'm sipping on my monster. Sipping on my monster. Everyone knows me. I love my, my Subahibis. Problem is, I ain't never gonna ever talk about it in some random Discord server. Cardistry Discord server. Bro. No. When, like, I just don't talk in any of these places. What's this? Litecore Discord server. Uh, I'm only, I'm in here for tech support, so I'm going to stay. UK speedrunner gathering? That shit got cancelled because of coronavirus. This is, this is, um, what's that guy called? I mean, girl called? Uh, Lethargy server. I ain't never talked in there. 420 Chan server. Bruh. I never talked in there. Lolly and Ali 20s. I like their music. I never talked in there. Sonic R speedrunning. I don't really play that game anymore. Uh, Jalen Harris' server. I go in there about once a year to ask about anime, but I ain't, I ain't play like that no more. This is a CSGO deranking server. I'm staying in there. Sometimes I like to derank. The Jazz Club. This is a festival that I don't know if I'm playing. I don't know when it's happening. It keeps getting delayed. Every two seconds, it gets delayed. Um, <clears throat> no idea. It just constantly gets delayed. The Witherfest. Tonight, I'm playing Witherfest. So, that's good. Um, yeah, today. It's in a few hours. Well, that'll be fun. Alright, what else? Counter-Strike, Condition Zero, Deleted Scenes, Speedrunning. Uh, again, I don't really play that game anymore, but I'm going to stick in the server because I, I like the people here and I like to keep up to date. I just like to follow the game even though I don't run it anymore. Um, I really could not give a shit about Digi anymore. I'm definitely leaving this one. The Void Gazer server is sometimes funny, so I kind of think I might stay here. Um, it's got Ben Saint in it, basically, and sometimes I like to fuck with Ben Saint. That's pretty much the only the only thing. Um, Star server is good. This is a good one. Yeah, the rest of these servers are my friends and shit, so that's all good. And let me leave this one, the crazy world, the worst fucking Discord server in the whole year. In the whole year. All right, so that's all of my servers it's gone. Goodbye. Bye bye. See you later. Go and check my SoundCloud notifications as I do from time to time. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go listen to my my stream. Let's see what the people I follow are posting. I, I don't know. I tend to just follow random people. Let's see. Tend to be people who, like, I get recommended. So, you know, whatever. So I go listen to some of this shit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. This is like the I'm just sure. That's what I'm all about. That's what I'm all about. Let's see. Let's see. What? Okay, that's trash. Let's see what we got here. No. What we all have? Good, good, good. Some fucking shit, yeah. It's just when you put off the line, bro. Get off the line. And that bullshit. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Listen to this. Listen to how the song sounds. All of them sound like this. Every single song sounds like this. Listen to this. Oh, this is actually good music. Maybe. No. Alright. It's the same thing with a phaser. Listen to this. It sounds the exact, it's the exact same song. It's the exact same song. What's this? It's the same song. Okay. It's literally the same song twice. Look. It's the same song. Listen, that's one song. Alright, that one sounds different. It's the same song. Again, it's the exact same song. What's this? Same song. Again. What's this? Okay, that's weird and cool. I like it. What's this? 
Because they just listen to that. What's this? It's the same song! It's the exact same song! What's this? Okay, that's some weird, interesting techno shit. What's this? I don't know what that is. What's this? It's the same song! Again! It's the same song! What's this? Okay, that's weird and good. What's this? If it ain't loyal, I don't want it. Let's go! It's the same song with an acoustic guitar. It's the same song with a guitar. What's this? I don't know what that is. Wait, what's this? It's the same song. What? It's the same song. What's this? It's the same song with a weird synth. It's the same song with a weird synth. What's this? Okay, that's weird and good. What's this? It's weird. What's this? Okay, good, good. This is what I'm talking about. You hear this? You hear how it sounds like it's me? What's this? I don't know what that is. What's this? Okay, whoever this wolf person is, they be doing good shit. They know what they know about weird shit. It's the same song again. It's all of this is the same song. Okay, that's a good shit. Frank Ocean Among Us? That's what I'm talking about. Maybe. I don't know. It's kinda gay. I like gay. Gay's good. It's the same song with a dumb with a small tent. That's kind of neat, though. I, I like this. This is kind of neat. Even though it's the same song. Even though it's the exact same song everyone else makes. At least it's, at, at least it's got a small synth. I don't know what that is. That's kind of cool. What's this? Oh, it's the same song again. What about this? What's this? Oh, hey. Let's listen to that. It's the same song. I wonder what this is. Hey, what do you know about that? It's the same song. What about this? Whoa, it's the same song. I wonder what that is. Oh, I didn't mean to click on it. It's the same song with no drums. What's this? Oh, it's the same fucking song again. What's this? It's, it's the same song but with lo fi click. Okay, that's not the same song. This is kind of dope. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of dope. Oh, look, it's the same song. Half of these are just different people posting their own covers of the same song. It's the same song. It's all the same song. All of these people, they wake up each day, they go to the studio, they meet up with their friends. This is my impression of them. Hey, yo, this is me and, me and I'm rolling up on the studio, my producer's in there, right? I'm, I'm Kid Trash or whatever. I pull up on the studio. Now listen, this is nothing against Kid Trash. It's a good song. It's just the same song everyone else is making. Doesn't mean it's not a good song. It can be a good song, right? It's just the same song. So this is what happens. They go into the studio. Hey, yo, what's good, man? Hey, yo, what's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, do you remember the song we made yesterday? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember it. That was sick. Hey, yeah, let's make that one again. That's what they do. That's what they do. So, hey, yo. Hey, yo. Remember that song we made yesterday? Oh, you mean the one that was the same as the one we made before, the day before yesterday? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one we made, the, the one we made yesterday is the same one we made the day before yesterday. What, what, what would we do that again? Oh, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. That's what they do. What's wrong with these people? Listen, there's nothing wrong. It's fine. You can do whatever you want. Listen, if, you, if that's what makes you feel, feel good about yourself, by all means, I'm happy. And if that's what people want to listen to, I'm happy. I'm happy about it. It's great. You know, it's a trend. That's, it's just a trend. I'm not pointing out anything crazy here. It's just a trend. But come on, Bo. Listen, I've had a lot of monster. I'm quite hyped up right now. I, I've cracked the code. The ultimate SoundCloud hit. I'll be, I'll be famous in no time. Fly away now. Fly away now. Fly away. This is it. This is what everyone wants to make. They just can't manage it because it's already been done better than they can do it. And it was in an anime that none of them have ever seen. Oh yeah, I lowered the, the video quality even more, as you noticed. Um, borderline unwatchable also lowers the audio quality. The reasons I did this, number one, to save space. Smaller file size means I can do everything quicker and save space on my phone and my computer when I'm editing and it means I upload it quicker so I don't have to take ages uploading a two hour video it will upload quickly which is just a nice convenience also just for aesthetic value looks kind of cool it's kind of sick um, kind of denper 
and linked to the aesthetic value is that I want people watching these videos who think that that is an aesthetic value thing. You know, it's, just, it's a filter. It's a pleb filter. It's a normie filter. It's whatever. So I can say whatever I want. It's not that I can't already say whatever I want, but, you know, just you got to keep the right crowd around. you got to always prune the edges, gatekeep yourself as much as possible. And uh, as, as I've always said, if, you, if, if whatever you're doing requires gatekeeping, it's already too late. The media itself should be a filter to keep out the normies, right? And that's that's what this is. Yeah, so normies, go back to your own uh, internet. <laughs> go back to your own internet. It's fucking weird. It's fucking weird how I've become like an ultra-nationalist when I'm talking about the internet. Like, I'm like, yeah, sure, you know. Abolish the nation state, do whatever you gotta do, right? But when it comes to the internet, don't let them don't let those people in. <laughs> this is my territory. <laughs> like the image boards or whatever or anime or whatever, I'm like, no. Only only my people, only autists are allowed in here. <laughs> yeah. Well there you have it. At least autists are um scientifically uh, you know what? I'm not gonna go there. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna not say anything. <laughs> Remember when I said I think my next album is gonna be grime instrumentals? Uh, well, I already got bored of making grime instrumentals, so I think that's not gonna be the case. But I do think my next album is gonna be something. I'm gonna start thinking about making an album again. I said at some point in some video somewhere um, something about the 2000s nostalgia cycle and how like the, the, the music that people are making and the art that people are making that's nostalgic for the 2000s remembers a very specific part of the 2000s that wasn't actually even really representative of the decade as a whole that um uh, in terms of like the music it generally tends towards like the sort of Euro pop uh, and like synth pop trancey kind of stuff when really uh, at least for me what I remember most of pop in the 2000s was like R&B type stuff um, and a lot of grime here in the UK or like that's just because of where I grew up like a garage and stuff like that. Anyway, that's not important. What's important is, I, well, I, I, I just thought, is it a coincidence that, like, so in the 60s there was a, a big protest movement and uh, and uh, the, some of the best music ever made came out of that, right? And so then when there was the Iraq war and loads of protests and, you know, America going to war and the UK going to war again uh, and big protests and stuff, but a lot of people thought, oh, good, great, there'll be lots of great music. Todd in the Shadows is a video about this. Um, and it turned out there wasn't really much great music about that, like anti-war music and stuff like that. Mostly people just wanted escapism and, like, the sort of, just to escape into a partying vibe, and that's that's why the sort of sparkly 2000s pop happened because that's what people people didn't want to be reminded of the times there when people wanted to forget that and just embrace whatever you want to call it hedonism or escapism or which is you know I'm nothing it's just how, how I can completely relate to that. Um, you, you don't want to have to think about how terrible the world is on a daily basis. You want to just have something that can, some just bright and sparkly pop music that can just play in the background or whatever. And is it a coincidence that now, when we also have some of the biggest protest movements, some of the biggest dest destabilization governments, political stuff, um, and a pandemic, and all of this shit, that that is the type of music that has gotten popular. Hmm. Especially with young people. Hmm. Like, yes. It's not a coincidence. Is the answer. There we go. John parallels. I can't believe I noticed this sooner. Like, it seems so obvious. A long time ago, near the beginning of this channel, I made a video called "Alcohol Is Unfairly Maligned," and that phrase became kind of a meme between some of my friends. And uh, in that video, 
I talk about how like a lot of druggy type people and like psychonaut type people, people who are into drugs, especially weed, like to shit talk alcohol, like to say like, oh, alcohol is poison. I only smoked the herb because the Lord put it in the earth. You know, those type of people. I'm sure you've heard of these sort of things. And it was basically a video saying, hey, here's the, some of the reasons that alcohol, hey, it's actually kind of a cool drug, even though it has certain downsides, just like every other drug, it's also got positives. And one of the things I'm, I just realized, an addendum, years later, I just realized an addendum to that video. These two bottles of alcohol, they both contain roughly the same amount of ethanol, the actual drug, and yet this one costs twelve ninety nine, and this one costs about 40 quid. And I am completely fine with paying 40 quid for this, despite it having the exact same drug in it. Why? Because it tastes amazing. <laughs> because it tastes great. Because of the whole experience of drinking it. It tastes, it's, it's, it's the smell, the taste, and, and everything, right? There is no other drug like that. I'm not paying way more for weed unless I know the weed is going to get me higher or it's going to have some sort of particular effect on me, right? I'm not going to pay extra for any other drug unless that it's about the effects of the drug. Whereas I will glad alcohol is the only drug that has a food component, really. Like, okay, I can understand paying extra for weed if, it, if you're going to one of those fancy, crazy restaurants they have in places where weed is, is legal, that where they do, like, weed uh, chefing. But in that case, you're not really paying for the weed. You're not paying to get high so much as you're paying for an eating, a dining experience. Alcohol, this is the same way. I'm not pay. I'm not going to get drunk off this Lafroig. It's too expensive to waste chugging it, right? And I wouldn't want to anyway, because it's about sitting down and enjoying a nice drink. This is what I bought so I can get drunk. This is what I bought so I can enjoy the taste of whiskey. And aside from those very rare weed restaurants, which I I would hazard a guess that no one in my audience has ever been to one, maybe not even seen one, maybe someone even aware they exist, um... Apart from those very rare instances, and even then, there is nothing you can get in those weed restaurants that you couldn't also buy a regular restaurant. The only difference is one gets you high and one doesn't. You physically can't have whiskey that doesn't get you drunk, or it would taste like shit if it did exist. I don't know, maybe someone's that is non alcoholic whiskey. That sounds terrible, right? Like, do you see what I mean? I'm not weather fest. I've never been to a micro festival before. I'm playing this festival. And technically, it's my first ever show. It's in Minecraft, but still cool. I, as soon as COVID's over, I swear to God, I will not let myself weasel out of this one. I will play real shows. Um, but yeah, it's like a hyper pop type shit. I feel like this is great because it can it's like my goodbye to this entire side of music, you know. It's like yeah, I've dabbled with it. I've played around in this area. Pardon me, I'm quite drunk and drinking. It's a festival, you know. Um 
But yeah, it's just like a good, good, it's a, it's a nice goodbye to this entire side of like SoundCloud music. Because today, I re-listened to um, one of my favorite albums, uh, which I've forgotten the name of right now, Flood something, Katie Day, right? What's it called? Flood Network? Am I retarded? What the fuck is that album called? What is it called? Blood Network, yeah, I'm right. Um, so I re-listened to Flood Network today, and man, that is a fucking great album. I'm not on this, yeah, okay, just checking that I'm not seeking this all on this. So. Um, yeah, I re-listened to Katie Day's Flood Network, and it made me think, man. Ain't, ain't no point making dumb, stupid music. Got to make emotions music, you know? And listen, dumb, stupid music is a type of emotions music. Um, you know, there's, things, there's layers to it. I've already talked about this. But this is a nice little passing moment, you know? I Every time I hear a great album, like a really good album, or even a really good song, um... Like yesterday, I listened to Katie Day, and today I re listened to. I'm trying to deprogram myself from pop music, so I'm, I'm trying to go back and listen to some of my favorite albums, like more experimental albums. Um, I listened to Teenage Poetry by. I forgot what it is called, but great album. Um, like ambient and stuff. Anyway, listen to that. And, uh,. Those albums, they make me fucking mad. Because they're so fucking much better than anything I've ever made. <laughs> like, it's it's kind of weird. I'm kind of... It's an old habit I have that I always compare myself to others. And, like, I... It's... I, I don't know how to fix my fucking problems. <laughs> like, it's a really old habit from a long time childhood type thing that uh, I always compare myself to others and I have to be better than everyone else, right? Um, and then when I... Obviously, with music, it doesn't even make any sense because it's subjective. Um, hey, hey, sorry, Thomas seems playing. Let me pause Thomas while I speak. It makes it easier. Um, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, fucking Katie Day makes me fucking pissed off because that album's so fucking good. That album is so fucking good and so unique and expressive and I just don't think I can do it. I I just get depressed because I'm like, fuck, I, I, I want to do that, but I can't. And it, 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 it makes me mad, uh, but not in a fun way. Like, I think other people get this, but they get it in a fun way where it's like motivating, where it's like, Oh, 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 man, fuck you, that album's so good, haha, <laughs> but, like, it's banter, you know, like, haha, <laughs> fuck you, bro, like, uh, like, oh, man, that album's so good, now I'm gonna go make an even better album, but no, it just makes me genuinely mad, I'm just like, fuck, <laughs> why is it so fucking good, why can't I be that fucking good, it makes me feel like, inadequate, um, and this isn't, this is not, I, I hope no one takes this the wrong way where it, they seem like, it sounds like I'm begging for compliments or something, where right? it sounds like, oh, I'm, uh, oh, please write in comments my music good, otherwise I'll kill myself. No, it's the wrong, wrong way around. I'm the one that's fucked up for this, because just because someone makes great music, that should be inspiring to me, not demoralizing. That's that's something in my mental process that I need to fix. And even though I know that logically, I, I've i never figured out since my childhood, whatever. I've fixed a lot of things about myself. I've I've... I've matured as a human being but in the back of my mind that attitude is so deeply ingrained i don't know what to do about it like and it's a really that's really the root of like a lot of my problems because if i am like not good at something quickly then i tend to just 
give up because at least I can control that because I, I find it so hard to try my best at something and then fail. Like if you try, if you, if I try my best at something and it doesn't go up, go very well, like let's say for example, I might be doing like an essay or something and I, I work really hard on the essay and I get a, a, a bad mark or like a middling man mark. Right. But I worked really hard on it. That makes me feel so fucking shit that I would just, purposefully do it badly because then at least it's like I can say to myself oh, well I didn't even try or I'll just ignore it and then fail and then be like well yeah I didn't even do it of course I failed because the feeling of trying your best at something and failing is that I can't even I can't deal with it I just I don't know how I need to work on myself I need to go to therapy I need to go to the homebrew DIY punk therapy with myself. I am Bozo the Clown or whatever. I, I, but, 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 Doctor, I am the clown from Watchmen. You get it? That's the joke from the, the media. It's the thing with the reference to popular comic book. I guess I do comments in these videos now. Um, okay. The man's now that says, Hello, Theo. I said one line plays. Yeah, I got some of those out loud too. It's just inevitable. Great, really, really enjoyed it. Yes. There you go. Worm says on Denpa, Frig, man, what if you had girlfriends? I can't even imagine it. Um, also, read Katara Shoujo by Avare Senso. Um, I've already read Katara Shoujo, it's good. Um, Duren commented on my drum tutorial. Um, appreciate every stuff you said there. I think that video is a little bloated and not that good. I kind of want to redo it, but yeah, it's good enough. Jalei Lane Caucus commented on the previous comment show. Um, uh, replying to a comment that I hope I clicked on the oh no, this has all gone terribly wrong. Um, basically saying stuff. I don't know. I I I already talked about it in that video. Um, we were confusing the cultivation of persona as hypocrisy when really it's just that we just hate the kind of people who stand for anything as long as it's profitable. That's not them lying, it's being honest, just honestly garbage. This I hard agree with and especially um, the kind of people who stand for anything as long as it's profitable. I believe, if I'm interpreting you correctly, that, or at least my interpretation is profitable doesn't just mean money. Uh, then this motherfucker, why? What? Come on, you know I can't fucking read Japanese. Okay, let's see what this says. Viscera. Oh, giblets. Okay, I get it. Giblets, yeah, nice. Cool, epic. Zomatsu. Zomatsu. Good. Zomatsu. I don't know what the fucking pitch accent is, but you think I fucking speak Japanese? I don't know shit. I do not know shit. I know nothing. I know nothing. Uh, yeah, that's all my comments on this channel. I have a bunch of comments on my main channel on my music stuff because I just posted a new song. Oh yeah, that's a, but, but it's not worth reading those because it's just a lot of it's compliments and that's just kind of awkward to read out. So yeah, did I already record a segment about this? I don't think so. Um, I have a note on my phone that tells me to do a do a clip about um BBSs and stuff like that. I don't know why. Uh, I'm thinking a lot about the small internet recently, which is like a movement away from, I mean, it, it kind of describes itself, but if you wanted to hear, you know what, I'll just read it out. 
there's there's a it's like a philosophy or grassroots movement as it describes itself. Did I already talk about this in another video? I don't know. The Ten Commandments of the Small Internet. Thou shalt strive to uh, number one. Thou shalt strive to do unto others as thou wouldst have them do unto you. Pretty redundant. Number two. Thou shalt strive to minimize thine imposed burden on others' bandwidth as much as possible within reason. Number three, thou shalt strive to make simple, beautiful web pages. Four, thou shalt maximize viewable text per total number of bytes on each web page. Five, downloading JavaScript to users' computers is of Satan. Thou shalt not do it ever, nor shalt thou suffer thy servants in thine house to do it, not thy manservant, neither thy maidservant. Thou shalt not use web design software that produces bloated web pages with unreadable HTML code. Thou shalt not worship graven, which is crossed out, large images. Thou shalt create web pages that can be viewed with as many internet browsers as possible, including text only and very old browsers. Thou shalt make navigation easy for others. And thou shalt not hide thine old blog posts under a bushel unless they are no longer relevant. Well, some of these rules don't apply to me. I don't have a blog and I don't know how to use JavaScript and don't, well, I guess that still applies. I still believe downloading JavaScript onto users' computers is of Satan. What, what, anyway, none of that matters. What matters is that, that I find that cool. Right? I find the small internet cool and moving away from as much centralized stuff as possible. Let me get off of R9K because this is porn. Um, let me open just an about blank. Uh, okay. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, God. My brain is not here today because I'm kind of hungover. I'm tired. Just didn't sleep well. Not good. None of it's good. Brain brain go bad today. Um, I wanted to watch Thomas Tank Engine today. I wanted to marathon the first season, but uh, I decided to watch it with Plunder, so we're going to watch it tomorrow, which is fine because I'll have a lot of fun watching it with Plunder tomorrow. So it's just delayed gratification but you know i'm a little wimp i can't deal with delayed gratification i'm a i'm a zoomer god this is not what this fucking segment was supposed to be about okay right, let's actually do the fucking thing i was trying to do before right okay so about the what i was the topic i was trying to talk about was the, the internet the small internet and stuff like that and different versions of social media as i'm sure you're aware before social media was even a twinkle in anyone's eye, there was something called BBSs in the 90s and stuff, which was how you communicated. I should be off of r k because they are going to postpone. Anyway, so before anything existed, there was BBSs, bullet board systems. They were like text-based. You would connect to them with a terminal and blah, 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 and it, it doesn't matter. But BBSs still exist right they're often called text boards now as opposed to image boards um most of them are based on two channel but uh uh i i realized some stuff so um when trying to move away from bigger internet things like twitter for example or tumblr you know not that i i've never had a tumblr account i'm not sure why i said that um Actually, that's not true. I did have a Tumblr account once. I know you, I I couldn't figure out how the site worked. I I I made a um a long 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 time ago. I made a Tumblr account um and I I I couldn't figure out how to find interesting people to follow, and so I just never used my Tumblr account. I don't even remember what what I called it. Anyway, that's completely irrelevant. <clears throat> Why was I talking about BBS? Oh yeah, Tildevas. So, um, th there's a an interesting thing I found called the Tildevas, right? Um, and the idea behind this is that it's sort of a, se a series of publixes, that is, public Unix machines, uh, which you just sort of SSH into, and uh, th you basically have a community just on this public Unix machine, which is really interesting to me, and I think it's an old idea that's this is like a modernized version. However, uh, and I, I even knew about this a long time ago because there was the original uh, tilde dot club tilde site tilde 
Republic, because I don't know what to call it, um, was around a long time ago. It was shared on Lane Channel a long time ago. And at that time, I was very big into the idea of, like, knowing all the small secret places on the Internet, different small image boards and whatever. So I thought it was interesting. And I, I had an account and went on there a couple of times. And I found it completely fucking boring because, honestly, there is li- there is not much to do. Like... There's a there's an IRC where you can talk to people, but that's not got nothing to do with the like tilde system. That's just an IRC. There are a billion different IRCs. There's like little games you can play. Like for example, there's a, an interesting little uh, grow like a, a Tamagotchi t- style like game where you like water a plant and like take care of a plant, and that's like and just and everything is just like oh, that's kind of neat. Like, that's the entire concept summed up is, oh, that's kind of neat. It's a bunch of things that are just kind of neat. And that's not really enough to keep me coming back. But anyway, recently I found out, oh, it turns out a lot of people copied the tilde.club idea, and now there's a whole verse, universe of them. And I thought it was interesting. I tried to sign up to one. My fucking sign-up never got accepted for some reason. They just... So I guess I'll sign up. Maybe that one's dead, and I'll sign up for a different one. But even if I did, I don't really know if I'm that interested in it. I mean, yeah, I'm just not sure. I, it's um, I'm not really sure what the point is. Like it seems kind of neat, but yeah, I'm just not really sure what the point is, um, of of these things. I mean, yeah, eh. Uh, it's cool that it's terminal based. More things should be terminal based, uh, and like kind of a unique idea. But uh, I'm not sure. So the the tildeverse and one of the other things that kind of put me off from it is the fact that it's uh, you have an account, right? I mean, it is a, just a Unix machine, like an open Unix machine. So well, it's not fully open. You need to be whitelisted, but which is why I signed up and then wasn't they never responded to my sign up. Um, but the, what I mean is you, you need an account on the machine to access the machine. Um, <clears throat> and so it's not anonymous. And I've realized that I, obviously I grew up on 4chan, right? But I mean, I had a Facebook and stuff, but really Facebook doesn't count as the internet. It's just meta meat space. Twitter doesn't count as the internet. It's just meta meat space. Right? So, uh, whereas Tilda is very clearly the internet or the wired, right? And 4chan, at least back then, maybe it's still a bit, I, I don't know. It, it's more of a spectrum than anything. Uh, it's, it's more the wired than meta meat space. And so, my formative experiences of of understanding the wired is anonymous like i feel like that's the default that's how it should be and so for example um i'm low-key doxing myself and actually you know what I'll, I'll, people know this people know this so there was this where, where was this one of my tabs yeah okay so there's this there's some chiptune musician or breakcore musician or something called Kathy who has like a weird Twitter cult and made like a this forum and I don't really like Kathy's music that much. I'm not really involved in the Kathy community people. In fact I kinda of hate most of them. But there's one person in Kathy who I really like, um, who I think is a really cool person. And so I was like Huh, I, maybe I'll make some friends by going on a forum. I haven't been in a forum since the 2000s. Let's see what what forums are about. And, like, having a consistent identity on a forum... Uh, this is... Sorry for the rolling shutter stuff. I have nothing to do about it. Um, it's really fucking weirded me out. I did not like it. <laughs> did not like it at all. Um, just made me generally uncomfortable. And so I ended up really just not posting, and I just slowly became more and more of a lurker until I just was permanent lurker. And also the posts here, honestly, aren't that great. And forums are shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forums are fucking awful. Like, I know that these people are doing it because of nostalgia. But look at this, right? Like, for sure, it's cool. But... This is like, people want to talk about the signal-to-noise ratio on 4chan. Look at this. One fucking line of text, and then the whole page is taken up by 
the signature. And that's like, even if you don't have a signature, there's a huge gap here. It's a bit ridiculous. It's a bit silly. Um, uh, and look, look, the signature, this is a cool signature. Like, that is, this stuff looks cool. And I know you can turn that off in this, like, in your account settings. You can turn off signatures so you don't have to see them. But that's a fucking dog shit design that forums have signatures. Like, that's, that shouldn't exist. Sorry. I'm sorry to forum people who like forums, but that's just a stupid fucking feature. Uh, and that they shouldn't exist. Uh, I just don't understand the point of forums unless they're like technical like i understand the point of uh a linux forum for example where, where uh, when i'm when I saw, i'm trying to do something on my computer and it's broken and i'm on the internet searching up my problems and i end up on the arch forum and it looks like oh someone asked a question and a bunch of people who know their shit reply and they can have a conversation discussing the problems or technical solutions they have they have and that's great i don't understand the point of a forum that's like a casual thing it doesn't really make sense to me it's that like if you want to hang out with someone why post something just on a board somewhere and then like with your name attached to it that's, I don't know. It's very strange to me. It just not it just doesn't really gel with my way of seeing the, the universe. And the tildes are kind of the same. It kind of just struck me as a bit like a a forum slash microblogging. I don't really understand the point. I'll I'll probably get into it, but I don't. I mean, I'll try and get into it, but I don't really understand the point. And I definitely won't get into forums because there's just too much stuff I don't like about the, the way they work. Um, and so when it comes to small internet stuff, I have to end up on BBSs and text boards and small image boards. What do you think about duvet? I really like... Sorry. That, was, that vape here was bigger than I anticipated it being. Uh, I like the pattern of my duvet. It looks really nice. Anyway, um, text boards are really nice. Text boards are comfy, even though, honestly, it's hard to find high-quality text boards on the internet. Anonymous text boards, like most of them are dead. Most of them are really old and really dead, or really new and really dead. Which is kind of the point that they're like small communities. Like, like, hold on, let me move this fucking window out of the way. Um, so like, this is the four dash ch right? Uh, four channel. This is like an OG copy of uh, two chan, like it's an OG English language two chan clone from around the same time as four chan. But while 4chan is still very popular, uh, 4SCH, I guess it's called 4channel, I'm not entirely sure, is basically dead. Like, you, you still get posts, like, it's not completely dead, but it's very slow compared to, if you're used to 4chan speed, uh, which I'm not really, I'm used to small image board speed, but this is this is pretty slow even for a small board. Uh, but it does look really nice, um, and it feels nice to use. Um, so this is a cool place, but I, I never really got into it because, I again, the quality of discussion here is pretty low. Um, like, some of it's good. Like, this this is kind of cool, but a lot of the discussion is, is kind of meh. This is funny. This is a funny occurrence. This guy came to advertise his text board. One person said it's shit, and then he's like, okay, my mistake. I took the site offline. Admins and mods can delete this thread. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very good thread. This is, this is see, like this is the good shit you don't get anywhere. Um, I mean you get that in other places, but you know what I'm saying. I like the good shit. I like the good shit. There's other text boards like uh, Rally, or it used to be called Rally dot space, but they changed the URL. Um, this one's also kind of very slow, but. Uh, pretty high, pretty good discussion goes on here, and it looks really nice. I, I have it on. Let me turn my this thing off. Uh, it, it's it's quite. It's got a really nice uh, CSS type stuff to it, you know. Oh, oops! I didn't realize where it was. Uh, yeah, the thing I don't like about this is that the posts are grouped by year. Uh, I don't like that because some of these posts from 2020 are probably still having like discussion i guess it's like it's to encourage the use like encourage people to make new threads so you're not just replying to threads from a year ago but on a board this slow like that's all the threads from 2020 that's it uh 
text and most of them will have like a few replies. It's a very slow board, which is fine. It's comfy and cool and I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but I just don't really understand the point of having the post divided by year. Um, I'm sure people are probably still commenting in the 2018. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you can't. I've never actually tried replying to an old thread from a year before. Anyway, that's not important. What's, what's cool is that this website, it's an, it's an original, it's not like copying CSS from a Japanese site, like for, for channel. It's, uh, uh, it's an original design for a modern minimal text board. Good. Whoever, pretty boy, tell him, I'm pretty sure is the person who, is that the person who owns it? I don't know. Whoever owns Rao, whoever this is, Yumi, Yumi XX, based, based human being. Uh, I like you. You're never going to see this, but maybe you're a friend of a friend of a friend who watches my videos. I support you. Um, why was I bringing this up? Oh, yeah, see, this is what I like, because it's anonymous. It's anonymous. There's, like, clear discussion topics, like anime. I know about anime. I can talk about anime with random people. It's fun. It's nice. Yeah, I can talk about embassy. <laughs> I can talk about games. Hey, programming and tech. I love, I don't, I'm a hacker. Yeah, I'm an epic hacker boy. Not particularly, but... Um, Oh, cryptocurrency thread, 360 video, um, I had interesting stuff, you know, there's some discussion goes on. There's other ones, there's other ones like, um, uh, DNY afternoon, dot DN, DYNU, here, um, this is a nice one, it's alright, oh no, oh no. The bad word, uh, but yeah, it's it, this one's all right. It's faster, but the quality of discussion is is is, in my opinion, not that great. Like, heh, I I never really got into post office, even though it's a comfy site. They have an interesting thing where they have an, a text board and then an image board that's just images, um, and the images get deleted, I think, very quickly. Uh, which uh, that's an interesting concept, I guess, but it means that no one's really going to post high quality images here that are relevant to discussion because there is no discussion. Um, I, eh, it's okay, it's interesting. They also have this, which is pretty cool, um, like a, a TV simulator. I don't really understand what it's supposed to be, never really got it, uh, but it, it's kind of neat. They also have an IRC. Is this a review of textbooks? No, I'm trying to discuss the state of the internet. This is Sushi Chan. This is a great website. What was my point? My point was that I can't get into things that aren't anonymous, right? I went on for way too long because I get excited about these cool, small places on the internet. You want to know the best one? You want to know the best in the image board, everything? The best everything? Uh, here. Best fucking... Hold on a second. Oh, fuck's sake. Sorry. It's terribly sorry. Just had to... This is the best fucking website on the entire internet. One Chan. One Chan is the second English language image board ever made after 4chan, and it's still going to this day, except it's about fucking trains. Train fags are the most based human beings on the fucking entire planet, right? the entire planet and it's just the comfiest slow comfy train discussion i don't know shit about fucking trains i am not a train otaku i would love to be but i just i don't know how to start it's there's, there's a whole listen maybe one day i'll get into trains they i think they're cool but i've never been really into them one chan is the comfiest place despite not knowing anything about trains i go here all the time i just lurk it's really Pardon me. It's really nice. It's just nice. It's a nice core. This is what the internet is supposed to be about. Not fucking bloated JavaScript fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's not fucking, not fucking billion dollar corporations. It's supposed to be anonymous people talking about trains. Talking about trains. I used to be super into, I used to be an image board and online communities otaku, right? I used to be someone who was really into finding all the small little places in the corners of the wired and little communities and stuff. But then I sort of stopped caring about 
Lane Chan and all the little boards and whatever, right? I stopped doing that. Why? I was wondering. Well, it's because I found good friends on Discord. I just realized the correlation makes sense. The correlation. Once I had good Discords to be in, I started to not really need the that anymore, you know? Didn't really need to go around talking. Like, if I had an opinion, I could just talk to my friends about it, and the discussion would be way more interesting because I'm invested in them as a human being, rather than if I have an opinion, I have to sort of format it in a way that will make it appealing to an image board. And, you know, I'm I'm one of those people... Listen, I know some people, they think the best part about image boards is the fact that you can shit post and do real conversations and do whatever. That's fine, that's fine, especially on 4chan. But to me, the opposite. I, I When I'm on the small image board, I feel a sense of community and a sense of, like, I don't want to make this place worse. I want to leave this place better than how I found it. If I'm going to say anything at all, then I want to be contributing to the discussion. I want to be making high quality posts, right? Not because of any sort of like sense of duty or morality, but just because hey, this is a nice place and I want it to stay being a nice place. And it's, yeah, it's literally like a sense of community, uh, a communal uh, responsibility or desire to keep a place nice to hang out in right and so if i have an opinion i can't half-ass it well i could but i would rather not for multiple reasons firstly it makes the opinion look worse and on the internet when you're anonymous people aren't going to give you the benefit of the doubt all the time they might but you can't bet on it whereas with your friends you can say they probably will give you the benefit of the doubt if you phrase an idea poorly they will sit there and try and figure out what it is you really mean whereas if you're just a post out of dozens on an image board you can't really assume that everyone or anyone is going to take the time to figure out what your actual intentionality behind your post was, which I think is why some people just prefer to ship posts because it's like, well, I don't even have to try, which is fine. That's a, that's a fine way to go about things. Uh, <clears throat> and also, yeah, I default to catchy because I could make anything. Okay, maybe not anything. I'm not insanely world's greatest musician, but like, my options are available, right? I can make it most genres that I want to make. I can make most instruments that I need to play, you know, guitar, bass, piano. But right, like MIDI, you can have whatever instruments you need. I, what I mean is, my options are open, right? And so it becomes the matter, a matter of, the, of judgment. The artistry comes in judgment, right? In curation and... Uh, choosing which elements, narrowing it down from the infinite to the finite, right? Being being particular about about these sorts of things, right? That's what that's what art is really. You know, you could leave. You you start with a block of granite, and it's the bit of granite you chip away that leave the statue remaining right it's it's how you choose to chip away at the granite it's how you which parts you choose to leave out that make the art there you go, that's a pretty good metaphor right i'm good at that shit yeah that was a great metaphor um so it's like okay so with with um if, if we think about my my no thank you albums the, the most recent ones, you've got To the Fairest, which was inspired by Shinsei Kamata-chan and uh, uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard a lot. Uh, and uh, I had like a philosophical point I wanted to make about pop music, but I didn't, I, uh, I don't know how well I did. But I was also still kind of in the like cyberpunk phase from volume one and two. So like, it's kind of breaking out of that and becoming boogie pop. Then To The Fairest is very clear, in my opinion. I had a very clear philosophical point. I was inspired by, like, uh, Shinsei Kamata-chan again um, and, like, modern SoundCloud music. 
uh, and punk music. And then, uh, what's the next album I made? Enterprise of Utility. Again, it was a continuation of a similar type of thing where I was like, I was like, I want to make music that goes from as small as possible to as big as possible. I want to, I want to take the emotion I feel when I listen to some music with a big crescendo, and I want to make the music that loud. Uh, so like, I want to, I want to, like the moment when you listen to a fucking God speaky Black Emperor song or something, and the music crescendos and it's like, the, all your emotions happen. It's like, what if I took that and just ran with it to the extreme? So it, instead of like a slow build up and then eventually you get a nice orchestral swell or something, it's like, here's like just my voice at a, at a bass and then one second later, the loudest possible distortion with 20 layers of guitars, four layers of bass, six vocals, two synths, and then everything's run through a distortion plug-in or five, you know? Like, that's that, that's what I wanted to do. And at the time, I was listening to a lot of black metal and a lot of, like, gloom as well, and doom. Gloom and doom and black metal, story of my life. So it's like I had all those inspirations running around in my head. It was pretty epic. But now... I don't really have anything in particular that I feel like I need to say that hasn't been said already. Like today, for example, I made a a little weird like industrial electronic noisy type of beat thing. Here, I'll, oh, I can't even turn my fucking computer back on. I won't play it for you, but it's a, in my opinion, pretty good song. It's kind of like uh, it's like fast paced. Uh, I don't know. It's cool, right? I'm happy. I'm happy with the song. Like I think it sounds. The instrumental sounds cool, but I don't think I can actually post. Like that can't be part of an album. Firstly, like I don't have enough to say in that sphere to make an album out of it. Like what am I gonna? I tried to rap over it. I ended up deleting all my rapping over it because it um, it sounded too much like me rapping over it. Um. And then I was like, yeah, the death groups already did this better than I can do it, you know? Like, I know this doesn't sound anything like death groups, but in my autistic brain, they're kind of dead, like the exact same thing, because to me, things are things that they are. Um, so I, yeah. And then I made my new song, uh, I See Right Through You, You See Right Through Me, or whatever it's called. And it's like, when I was making that song, my goal, I know I didn't have any political agenda. <laughs> I didn't have like a, I'm going to take part and examine. There's no concept behind it. That's what I mean. There's no concept. There's nothing invented behind it. There wasn't like, oh, here's this cool sound. Like even some of my more poppy songs, like um, uh, Sit Tight, for example, like that whole thing came out of the, like the the weird piano melody that I have in that song. Like I came up with that weird like like piano melody that doesn't quite loop, but like somehow feels good to listen to, and then built the song around that. So it's like, oh, I have an interesting idea, like an interesting kind of weird idea. Uh, and it has that weird sound as well that you hear at the beginning of the song. So it's like you have this pop song, but it's also got like a weird idea to it, and then the pop just comes out of it. Or um, Same Look, of course, is like really noisy, and it's like, kind of halfway between like a punk song and like a dance song with like it's weird it's like a weird song right and uh wrong player is like hey i i took influence from post-punk but i put trap in the drums uh but then this one it's like i i, I wasn't planning to make a straightforward pop song i was planning to make a, another post-punk song but it just came out as a pop song uh which i wasn't expecting but the reason it came out as a pop song is because every time I was producing it and writing it, writing is a series of choices, right? It's a series, it's a decision-making, problem-solving series of choices. You're presented with a problem and you have to make various choices to solve that problem, right? As the problem could be what note comes next or, you know, whatever. What instrument do I add? What guitar tone do I use? Blah, blah, blah. And every time... When faced with the options, I would select the option that maximizes the catchiness because that's the obvious solution. So if you want a song to get sound good, yeah, because it, it's very visceral, right? You 
you hear a, a song that's catchy and you're like, mm. when you when you change an element to the song and it makes it catchier, you can instantly not recognize that, right? You can you can change an element to a song. If I if I added added the the guitar line to that song, right? I, I record the guitar line, and I listen back to it, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's super catchy, and it makes me feel happy, and it makes it like I'm like it's instant, like yeah, that was a good decision. Rather than you know picking some that so so every time I was faced faced with a, joy, a choice, I would pick the thing that would make the song the most catchy, and I ended up with a very catchy song. Um, however. It's not something that really has anything to say. It, I mean, it has some things to say in terms of, like, lyrical content. But, I mean, it's about... The lyrics are about, um, like, uh, surveillance capitalism, right? What you think, what you think, what you do. I'm made of glass, you see through. Right, it's like a... Uh, it's about being observed by Google, right? Basically. Uh... And that's like somewhat interesting, I guess. But the song, the it's it's like the the song version of Ludo Narrative Dissonance. The lyrics have nothing to do with the instrumental, and not in an artistic way, where it's like, oh, the lyrics dark, but the instrumental happy, ha <laughs> ha, epic art art moment. It's not like that. It just it's just because I wrote the lyrics after I wrote the song, and I started writing lyrics. How I write lyrics is I just come up with vocal melodies by sort of making random noises over the song. And then once I've got the random noises, I just work whatever, like, words come naturally out of those random noises. And then whatever words those are, I then have to write lyrics following on from that that make it make sense. Um, so the chorus, what you think, what you think, what you do, that was just a random fucking words that I came up with. That wasn't, I, I, that's the first thing I wrote, because I was trying to come up with the vocal melodies for the chorus. Uh, I normally start with the choruses, not always, but sometimes. This time I did. And so I, I started, and, and then I'm, what you think, what you think, what you do? And then from there, I was I, my next option, what I thought was going to be like, <laughs> that was my original melody. So you can hear my bed vibrating because I'm nodding my head to it. Um, some, something like that, probably not that exact thing, but some, something along the lines of the melody, and I was like, yeah, that doesn't really work, so I just cut it down to the first part, right? And, and then I was like, where do I go from there? So then I eventually, I built the whole lyrics. What you think, what you think, what you do? I'm made of glass, you see through. I thought that was kind of a cool look. And then I just thought, well, what does I'm made of glass you see through mean, really? Because it was just a random series of words, like, what, like, what you think, what you think, what you do. Okay, so that's clearly someone asking, like, wh what are you thinking about? So maybe it's like someone asking me, um, like, tra someone, someone who is trying to look into my thoughts, you know? And then from now it's like, oh, I can make a song about surveillance and big data and stuff, or whatever. Uh, Big, big tech, big everything, everything big these days. Uh, and so then from now I could write the rest of the lyrics. But I didn't come up with a theming until the lyric writing process. I think really what I need to be doing then is spending a lot of time just listening to music, exploring some of the... Maybe... I just get bored really quickly of ideas. Like, the idea of pop music is just boring to me. When it first happened, I was like, wow, I went from making weird experimental music to making pop music. Like, that's the most big jump in focus I could possibly make. So it lasted a long time. It's not like, oh, I went from making black metal to making doom metal. Like, that's not that I actually ever did that. But that would be a relative, I probably wouldn't be. It's a different thing. What am I saying? Something about, oh yeah, boredom. So I get bored of shit easily. Can't make two songs that sound the same. Like the Denpa thing. Still like making Denpa music. Haven't made any since those two tracks I made. One of them never even released. You can hear it in my Witherfest set though, which I guess I'll release at some point. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Denpa music. That's fun. Need to, oh yeah, so... Oh, fuck. 
I think I'm making a double album next. I don't know what I'm going to do. We made a double album where one half is denper, one half is metal. So it's like the two opposite type of music. <laughs> That'll be kind of sick. Metal's kind of like boring to me now. Like I haven't listened to metal in ages. Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of want to do more electronic stuff. Uh, but like, I also like playing guitar. I really want to build, be fusing both of them, but um, I just can't come up. With after, after like two years of trying to come up with a good way to fuse electronic and guitar music, given up. Haven't given up, but uh, need to get my fucking audio interface. That's for that will probably give me a good spark from inspiration. You know, once I get my audio interface and I can play bass again, and I can do all my bass do all sorts of weird effects, that'll probably give me a nice dose of inspiration. Maybe I'll just make to the fairest two, or to the fairest. Letter two, number two, the first. That'd be kind of sick. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just don't know. Also, I've, I've, a lot of my fan base has been become SoundCloud people, basically. Like my SoundCloud is popping, not my Bandcamp necessarily, and so SoundCloud is um, very much favoured towards singles rather than albums, and so. It, you know, that's one of the reasons I haven't been thinking like album album centric. I've been single centric for ages because it's much easier to release a single uh, on SoundCloud and then you know it gets more views than if they're spread between an album. Uh, and therefore, I make I literally make more money off of it, which is nice. Uh, like. I do actually have to think about this sort of stuff because it's getting to the point where I can't, you know, soon enough I'm going to be out of uni and then I have to support myself. I won't have student loans anymore. So that's another thing that makes me think, like, should I just be focusing on more poppy stuff? I don't like making pop. It just doesn't make me feel like, it just makes me feel like, oh, fuck. It just makes me feel like I'm never going to make an album go stand the test of time. Because, like, none of this shit that's coming out right now is going to stand the test of time. Like, none of the fucking... You think anyone in 10 years is going to listen to Fraxium? Do you seriously think... No fucking universe. People will listen to... People will still listen to Katie Day in 10 years. People will still listen to Death Grips in 10 years. People will still listen to, um... I don't know. Grouper in 10 years. No one's listening to Fraxium in 10 years. No one's listening to fucking Sebi. No one's listening to any of this shit after this phase goes. You know, no, it's not happening. People will still be listening. Listen, people will still be listening to Chief Keef in 10 years. People, because I'm still listening to Chief Keef 10 years later, you know. Everyone's going to love Chief Keef always. That's who you got to be. That's who you got to be. See, and the reason I say that is because, you know, I think it's easy to imagine that, like, oh, hip-hop bad music, hip-hop silly music, guitar white people music, serious good music. But that's not true. That's definitely not true. Like, people will still be listening to Lil B in 10 years, right? Guarantee. People will still be, people are still listening to, like, all type of shit, you know? I'm still listening to Wiley 10 years later, or almost, you know? It's not about genre necessarily. It's about purpose. Chief Keef is something special, you know? Something revolutionary and important. Whereas none of these shits is. They're just people who really want to be special. And right now I'm also just people who really want to be special. Uh people some people like my music, but that's not enough. <laughs> I need to be I need to make something that will still be able to stand on its own ten years later. So it's good that I don't. I'm not putting any pressure on myself for my art. You know, <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not not holding myself to a ridiculous standard here. It's a good thing I'm being sensible and just doing what makes me feel happy in the moment and not holding myself to an absurd standard. Like, oh yes, I need to make a masterpiece to still be listened to twelve generations later. I'm Bach. Good thing I'm not doing that to myself, right? 
Poof. It's tough here in my brain. Tough. Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. Well, when it comes to governments, he's right. Government is literally a play, uh, a form of theatre. And not in the sense that, oh, these are all just puppets and actors and the real ones in control of the Illuminati behind the scenes or whatever group you so happen to proclaim, whatever your proclivities happen to be. No, they really are in government signing laws, making decisions, taking votes, having debates whatever they're really doing all that stuff but it's simply part of the play it's just another aspect to the theater they really are changing people's lives cutting budgets to services doing whatever but it's just as a part of the performance not that it doesn't happen but it's still My new thing came, I can play bass again in smoothing, and coincidentally, at the same time, I suddenly feel like, shit, I don't know how to explain it in words, but like, my brain, you know when you, you ever get like a migraine, and like, because of the pain, you just can't think properly, imagine that, but without the pain, I mean, there's a little bit of headache, but it's it's not really that bad at all, but it's just... The, the thought fuckery and I feel kind of sick it's like a migraine but with the pain isn't that bad is that a thing? I don't know there we go oh. maybe I've got COVID I think it's possible probable in fact that I got some sort of sickness because when I went outside in the last video, that was the first time I'd been outside in a very long time, and so my immune system is probably not kept up with all the latest news, you know? It could be a flu of some kind, it is the winter flu season. Uh, could be COVID, could be just a random cold, that because my immune system is not prepared for it, because I've been in my little bubble for the last 10 years or whatever, that uh, it's hitting me harder. Could be something completely different, could just be a random weird migraine thing that's not related to anything. Could be anything, really. Could be, maybe, maybe it's a brain tumor, who knows? Fun times in the me. So, one year alone in the forest of Sweden, building log cabin like our forefathers. Pretty good video so far. I'm not that deep into it, but there's like a genre on YouTube, right? The primitive technology type thing. It's like a whole genre of of YouTube stuff. Uh, and this is like, you know, this has millions of views. This has 10 million views. Uh, over 10, almost 11 million. Um, and I haven't, you know, it's. I can't help but see pure ideology here. <laughs> pure ideology. Uh, in in two senses. On the one hand, there's a good bit to it, right? There is there is an ingraining in the public consciousness that there is an alternative to life, right? That the modern uh, neoliberal uh, homogeny is not the only way to live, right? That. Um, houses don't just appear from nowhere, that someone had to build them, and that's a good way to understand production and class consciousness and start thinking about that sort of stuff. Or, like, uh, you know, you don't have to live in a metropole with a job. You know, there's other ways to live life, and these other ways are actually much older. And, in fact, the current system is a relatively recent arbitrary development um, you know, it, it draws attention to all these things. Like, oh, maybe I don't need to be paying a landlord for a place to live. It's possible to just build one yourself in a forest somewhere if you take time to do it. And that's how it was done forever. And, you know, I have and prim sympathies as well. So I, I do support and, and, and like this sort of idea of not just running away from primitivism as hard as possible, but uh, sort of rewilding. However, on the other hand, 
it also reinforces the sort of neoliberal belief in uh, well, you don't you, uh, putting everything on the individual. So, uh, oh, you don't like society? Why don't you just move to the woods and build a log cabin? Rather than you know, we should change society somewhat. Or, or like, oh, if you don't like it, then you can go and use your personal responsibility and go into the go build yourself a house because everyone has the means and skills and time and money to do that. You know. While we're on the subject of being pseudo intellectual, um, <clears throat> so I, I tend to say say like, or I, I tend to try and uh, lean. So I still have that weird migraine thing. So my thoughts aren't that straight right now. But um, what am I saying? So when when it comes to anarchism, right? I tend to be as much as possible away from you know moralist or uh ethical or uh humanist or any of these sorts of or even emancipate emancipatory uh reasoning behind it I, it's not like oh we need to abolish uh the state and all these weird hierarchies because Freed more freedoms like it's i I try and avoid that as much as possible my thinking because it's kind of meaningless i mean it, it it's me it's it is meaningful in a way but it's also not really enough for me to it's not it's not um concrete enough it doesn't have enough substance to base an entire you know to to, to be worth really caring about uh, maybe philosophers can care about that but to me it, it's a uh, it's kind of a bit flimsy. The real the reason sorry, this guy's collecting moss shouts the fuck out. It might be actually some sort of uh liver war, I'm not sure. But either way. Gotta love moss. Um I try and avoid that sort of stuff and try and to go towards more materialist or um functional practical reasons to tend towards or tend against hierarchy, and that is in terms of efficiency, right? But like under capitalism, if you want to get something done, you know, firstly, there's like five competing companies all trying to work on the same thing separately instead of consolidating their resources and getting it done better. Uh, there's also like, oh, well, if you want to get something done, you have to get it approved by your middle manager who gets it approved by their manager who gets it approved by their boss. And there's all this bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is incredibly inefficient. And anti-bureaucracy is like the key point in my personal anarchy, right? Like, uh, bureaucracy is just so terrible. <laughs> it's just such a terrible way to run the world. And it's anything that moves away from bureaucracy is innately good. Um, or, or better than what we have right now. Um, you know, all this stuff. And then the, the counter-arguments, the, the old-fashioned capitalist arguments, are like, oh, well, without the profit motive, no one would ever do any work, even though people did work for uh, thousands and thousands of years before the profit motive was really that much of a big deal in most people's lives. Um, it's stuff like that, right? Uh but I like to be self-critical, and I think we can take the example of Valve. Now, Valve, this is as in the company that makes video games or runs Steam or whatever. They have a horizontal organization structure. Now, we don't really know exactly how their companies run, but as far as I understand, um, Gaben is the CEO on paper, but technically, like, it's all horizontal. You can work with on whatever you want with whoever you want, um, in a sort of amorphous way, the way you can sort of join and leave projects as you wish and, and stuff like that, right? And Gaben is just another employee. There is, it's more like self, self-governing. self Like, it's not like, oh, everything has to go past Gaben. He's really just a figurehead. Um, and the interesting thing about Valve is they have Steam, which is literally free money. So the profit motive just does not apply to them. They can basically spend as much time and as much manpower doing whatever they want to do for as long as they want to do it, um, because they will just Steam just generates enough money for them that they can just 
like for example Gabe Newell is very interested in like brain computer interfaces so he can just spend as much money as he wants within reason and as much time researching brain computer interfaces now I've heard that actually Gabe Newell spends most of his time in his office playing Dota um and that's my, my food it's not quite ready anyway as I was saying so they have this sort of horizontal structure and another thing you might know about Valve is they didn't release a game for like 20 years or whatever 12 years or I don't remember how long but they as a game company they basically completely failed in their journey their mission their journey I don't know why I said that like they they uh, uh, on the one hand, it was like it's a great place to work. You know, the pay is good, the um, and you get to work on whatever you want to work on, and blah blah blah. But after Half Life Alex came out, there was a and Valve went through a brief phase of being more public with how they operate internally. Turns out that people would there were lots and lots of projects, interesting projects that got started, but actually most things never got finished because in order to actually finish a game you need to do a lot of tedious boring work and no one would willingly do that and so uh, games just never really got past the sort of beginning phases of development and lots of and the staff were starting to get demoralized because they hadn't actually shipped anything ever and it turned it, when they decided to make half-life alex they purposefully made a more vertical hierarchy in order to sort of force people to, like, they willingly organize themselves, as far as I understand, into a more vertical system so that they could sort of force each other to actually ship a fucking game. And that that's how Alex came about. And I kind of... So without the profit motive, even without the profit motive, they, in order to actually produce the art they needed to, they wanted to produce, they had to sort of organize themselves vertically and have these a more traditional capitalist hierarchy now uh, and before that the satisfaction wasn't that high and a lot of, you know there's other problems with valve like there are some people said that hey the, the uh, horizontal working structure is not as horizontal as, they, as a lot of people like to say there actually was a lot of man like sort of middle management types and, and stuff like that and it's it's really hard to say what goes on inside of a private company like that, but either way, I think that it's good to acknowledge that, that, that this is kind of a failure of the what I was calling the more efficient horizontal model, right? Because clearly, it didn't work. People weren't finishing games when they weren't forced to. Now, I can't. Um, there's a few possibilities about this. Firstly. Maybe my entire worldview is completely wrong and we need a strict hierarchy in every rigid form of society. More likely, um, there's just different people with different needs. Um, maybe a more patchworky type of model is, is actually what's needed. So for me personally, I, I work way worse in a more hierarchical system. I work far better when I have the freedom to work on whatever, and at freedom and time, importantly, to work on whatever I want for however I want to work on it. That's just always been the case. I, when I'm under pressure from above, I just work terribly. I work slowly and efficiently, not on purpose, but just somehow I, I don't know how to really describe it. Whereas when I'm self-driving, um, uh, I can work much better even though it seems like I'm working more inefficiently because I'm throwing a lot of shit at the wall and a lot of it never turns into anything when I actually do need to end up finishing an album or whatever uh, it turns out better like that's just always how it's been for me and maybe that's just a me thing like maybe most people don't think like that maybe the world most people or a big subset of people need that extra push to get through the tedious bits of their work uh, like for me, I, I don't mind doing the tedious bits because it's worth it for me for the for the the catharsis of making a final artistic product that I'm proud of. But maybe for other people, uh, if they have the option to not do it, they will just abandon the project. And I can fully relate to that because I do that in other parts of my life, just not with art. Uh, I do that with schoolwork and stuff. What the fuck? Why did that just go over again? I don't know. Anyway... Um, you know what happened there. Anyway, um, was I saying something about hierarchy? Maybe, 
So maybe that's the thing. Maybe if we really want to have a, a way to run the world with, with a more horizontal type of structure, the, the, there should actually be, it shouldn't be like one rule for everyone. Maybe there should be a more patchworky system where some places choose to run themselves. Uh, I, I saw a funny phrase of the uh, I I've been going on X lately. I've been really enjoying browsing X. Uh, I've never got into X for some reason, even though conspiracy theories and stuff have always been vaguely interesting to me. Um, but I saw something funny on X that was a, a phrase of voluntary fascism. Uh, I don't know why I found that so funny, but maybe maybe some people just want voluntary fascism where everyone in the community decides it's best for everyone to just have a top-down, very strict hierarchy. Maybe there needs to be more... Maybe that's the actual ultimate freedom. But the problem that I... The, the problem I see with that is... Um, that uh, vertical, or, I mean, horizontal organizations tend to not be expansionist, whereas vertical organizations need expansion to propel themselves. Like capitalism needs profit to, just, otherwise it's not capitalism. You know, M C M prime formula. There needs to be profit, and that means they need the profit. There needs to be endless growth, and to have endless growth, there needs to be expansion. So, if you have a top-down system like that, you then like, and let's say you have a patchwork where there's one community with a, a, a sort of a strict hierarchy surrounded by communities with, with or neighboring a community with uh, no hierarchy uh, well the community with no hierarchy doesn't really have a necessarily have a reason to expand but the community with a strict hierarchy does have a reason to expand and so therefore they'll just you know conquer uh, the, the horizontal place and uh, eventually we're back where we are right now, which is not ideal. No, don't know how to solve that. Maybe the maybe we need the NAP. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm just an ANCAP. Maybe we just need the no aggression principle. That nah, that sounds like a stupid idea. Um, yeah, not sure not sure how to solve that problem yet uh, in my my genius brain. Uh, but maybe that's maybe the in maybe rather than sort of strict ward off communities it could be more like a sort of cosmic microwave background of hierarchy where there are certain cool spots and certain hot spots and uh, freedom of movement between them so it's more like a gradient maybe that's the best way to do it or maybe more like a union of egoist type thing because here's another thing that I find interesting about Valve or not that I find interesting about Valve but that you that I that you might not notice about that story is that they voluntarily organized themselves into a hierarchy when they thought it was necessary. And we don't know how Valve is structured right now, but it's possible that once Alex was released, they they went, whew, well, glad we got that over with. Now let's go back to all separately working on whatever weird experimental projects we want to work on self-directedly. Um, maybe that's that seems kind of likely to me, in fact, almost a little bit. I might, I don't know. Like, that seems like something that could happen. So maybe in a cell phone uh, structure, people would be more amorphous. There wouldn't be such a rule of, like, or either it's fascism or anarchism and nothing in between. Maybe people, when they're free to self-organize, would sometimes choose for one specific purpose to organize themselves hierarchically and sometimes choose to organize themselves horizontally. I just don't know. Uh, I don't know if there is an answer that's best for everyone. Uh, yeah, who knows? It's definitely an interesting case study. I'm surprised they haven't heard any anarchists talk about it because the thing that's interesting about it is the fact that Valve doesn't need to make a profit. They chose to make a profit. Uh, they they were motivated instead by they really want VR to be a thing and they needed to make a game that would sell VR to people, that people would shell out a $1,000 for uh, for a headset for a game. And the only way they could do that is with Half-Life because it's such a big IP. So because they have Steam, they don't need the money. But they do want to ship um, VR for like the future, basically, because in the future they assume they want to be the main VR people or one of them. And so you can't really say it's a truly horizontal and non-profit-driven system. 
But it is, it's an interesting case study. I don't know why I've never seen anyone talk about this from a political angle, because it's, it's really fascinating what went on at Valve. Um, yeah. If anyone has anything they want to add to the conversation, please leave it in the comments, because it's, uh, it's definitely a really interesting topic. recording way too much stuff lately. I don't really remember, but I think I said something earlier. Maybe it was in the previous video or something. Did I even leave that clip in? I might have deleted the clip and not posted it because I thought it was dumb. But if in case I accidentally left it in or I left it in on purpose, well, I, I don't remember. I said something about how, like, uh, why are we bothering funding NASA and the European Space Agency when... Uh, we still have like homeless people and stuff but then I thought about it more I mean I didn't even think about it more I already knew it when I said it I just said it without thinking that like really the amount of budget that goes towards those things is actually not that much compared to like military spending and, and stuff like that like it'd probably be better to reorganize 
uh, well, I don't know. It's not a zero-sum game. Or if it is a zero-sum game, we can take away the winnings from, like, the military and, like, taxing rich people more uh, rather than not doing interesting science stuff. Because science is kind of interesting and cool. Even though I like to distance myself from scientism, I, I think science is interesting and what, you know, it's cool. It's a cool thing. There's lots of interesting research. I personally prefer, like, the theoretical stuff, but that doesn't take much money. That's just to keep her someone in a room and they think about stuff but uh it's kind of pointless but that's kind of why i like it you know like what are we gonna do if we just dis- discover the secrets of the universe who knows but uh it's kind of interesting um maybe we should start putting more money into alchemy you know maybe we should start putting more money into hermeticism where's, where's more money for the fucking the, the hermetic society of my, my dick I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about so Digi's deleting all of their old videos right and at first I thought I scrambled to, to be the one who backs them all up because I know I'm one of the people with the deepest Digi knowledge on the planet so I thought and Digi was very important to me for a few years very influential on my art and my personality for a while but not anymore at all really not modern digi on modern me and not past digi on modern me none of it really matters to me anymore and so I thought fuck it this is a good example of the transience of all things I am a big believer in the power of language, right? In order to do something, you have to be able to conceptualize of it first. You can't do something that you can't imagine yourself doing, right? You can't do... Action is born of desire, and you can't desire something that you don't know exists. You can't desire what you can't conceive of. You Maybe you can desire something unconceivable in a vague sense like as in literally the idea of something unconceivable but you can't necessarily there's no you can't desire a specific unconceivable thing that doesn't make any sense and so you can't do anything that you can't conceive of and and the only way to conceive of things you can't conceive of anything that you can't uh, you don't have language for, and that's my hot take, right? I've always I've thought this for a while. If you don't believe me, let me give you a couple of hints here. If you don't believe me that you can't be, you can't conceive of things you have language for, let me tell you two things to do, Buster, uh, because clearly you don't know what you're talking about. You, I want you to go on the internet. I want you to open up a new tab, DuckDuckGo, whatever search engine you use. I want you to search in uh, Radio Lab words episode or something podcast it's a podcast npr podcast called words listen to that and then once you've done that i want you to go go back into duck duck go and i want you to search up wittgenstein philosophical logical tractatus no tractatus logical philosophical or whatever google wittgenstein watch some fucking shit about wittgenstein okay watch some lectures about wittgenstein and listen to that fucking so you there the wittgenstein you got the philosophical angle right don't read wittgenstein because you won't understand it no one understands it but just watch a lecture he he can't write he he's a fucking retard wittgenstein he he literally doesn't know how for someone whose entire pol- philosophy is about language uh, he has no idea how to write he's a terrible writer he doesn't make any sense don't don't even try it. Just don't waste your time. Just l- b- listen to some lectures on Wittgenstein on YouTube or read secondary text because that's the only way you're going to understand anything. Um, and listen to that NPR podcast. And then t- come back to me and tell me if you still think you disagree with me. And then I'll listen to you. Then I'll listen to you. <laughs> if you don't, if you try and tell me you don't agree with me now and you haven't done those things, I'm just going to ignore the fuck out of you because clearly you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. If you, you've done all that and then you still disagree with me, well then you clearly have know something I don't. And so then you're worth listening to. 
anyways, I've always been a big believer in the importance of language, which is why I ended up spending so long coming up with the term denpa, right? I think coming up with the term denpa. I didn't invent the Japanese word denpa, but if you actually think about it for a second, what does my vlogging in my room for two hours and posting on YouTube have to do with mosaic.wav? What does my vlogging in, what does my fucking, uh, I don't know, what, what, does, what does to the fairest have to do with chaos head? It, it, there's nothing. There's no connection there. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, you can make a connection if you really want to, uh, as I have. I made a video about it. It's called Denpa. Uh, but really, it's just a bullshit word I plucked out of nowhere because it sounds cool, because it has a history, it has links, it's blah, blah, blah. What matters isn't I mean, none of that. What matters is the fact that we now have a word to rally behind. A, a word, and once you have a word for something, you can actualize that thing. We have a word for it. It's like sigils in, in mystic, mysticism. It's like es esotericism. It's the same it's words as sigils. Uh, it's the same sort of thing. So now we have the word denpa. That's what matters. That's why denpa had to be a really long propaganda video, because it needed to get into your mind that denpa was an important word. right? See, I'm a genius. You, you know I'm a genius. I don't have to explain this to you. But that's why it's important and of course the moment I knew I'd won is when Digi was like oh I'm Denpa now oh I realized I've been Denpa the whole time yeah of course because I'm more powerful than you that is literally the that is the most on the nose representation of me literally overtaking my childhood idol not really childhood idol mentor i guess you could say the student becoming the teacher in the most literal sense right my raw power over language and ideas overtaking uh, the person who inspired me to do it in the first place, because remember, the only reason I started making YouTube videos is because I wanted to rip off insomnia analysis. Um, everyone knows this widely known fact, right? And a uh, few years later, here I am, overtaking the person who inspired me in the first place and enveloping them in my wider Denpa phenomenon, right? I don't think anyone can deny this. I make better videos than Digi does now, right? Like, maybe you can argue that Digi's older videos, the older After Dark videos and some of the anime videos are better than my videos. Sure, you can make that, you can make that argument. Mm, I don't know if Digi's ever made anything as good as The Sacred Cow. I still think The Sacred Cow is better than most things Digi's done, but that's just my hubris, okay? Yeah, I'll accept that argument. But Digi now... There is no, no, no argument to be made that Digi now is anywhere close to my level of pure genius, right? Pure, unadulterated um, genius. Uh, so, uh, and to prove, as if to prove it, Digi makes a fucking awful album, two, two of them. It's terrible. Oh, man, they're so bad. Some of the worst music I've ever heard. I don't mind saying this anymore. But at one point, I was like, oh, but what if I scare Digi off? I don't care anymore because Digi is not relevant in any universe and has wiped herself from relevancy by wiping all her old videos. As if, like, whatever last possible remnants of relevancy she had. Which was the point, by the way. She's not... Well, she is stupid, but that's not the point. Uh, like, the, the, that was the purpose of her doing this is because she doesn't want to be relevant on the internet because she's getting bullied by kiwi farms or whatever, right? Uh... You know, I, I feel for I feel for that. That can't be fun for anyone involved, right? But uh, yeah. Anyway, where was I going with this? Yeah. So Digi becomes Digi co-ops the Denpa label, right? Fun times in the fun world. Digi co-ops the Denpa label is irrelevant though. So eh, that's more like you've been subsumed by my empire. More like you've been subsumed by my empire, my growing mimetic empire of Denpa, right? Uh, it, it's sort of like a manifestation, you know? Um, and so, it, it, as if to reinforce this ideology, as if to ratify, as if to hyperstitionally arrive from the future, Denpomo hyperstitionally arrives from the future in the form of Diddy deleting her channel. Guys, come on, could it get any more on the nose than this? Could it get any more on the nose than this? Eris, Eris. Eris, could it get any more on the nose than this? Eris, could it get any more you know, on the nose than this? Digi, hypothetically, me, arrive, future, I'm famous. I'm the world's most famous man. I'm the world's most famous man, and I come from China. Neo-China, because I arrived from the future. Hell yeah.
I've overtaken Nick Land in power. I've overtaken Mark Fisher in power. I've overtaken Code 9 in power. I'm coming for you next, Burial. Burial, I'm coming for you next, Fortech. Apex Twin, I'm coming to your house, Apex Twin. I'm gonna be there and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna absorb your intellect into me, like 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 a, a, a um the, the 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 episode from Doctor Who called The Wire, uh, the Christopher Eccleston episode where the TV suck people's faces off. And I would say editor remember to put a clip in here, but there's no way I'm gonna remember to put a clip in here. So if you wanna know what that looks like, just go on YouTube and look up Doctor Who The Wire. I think it's called The Wire. Might be called The Wired. Another interesting coincidence. Ever heard of a little TV show called Serial Experiments Lane? Ever heard of that? Ooh, interesting. Interesting little parallel there. Interesting. Almost like I work everything into my ideology. Almost like I am sub 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 I am sub Almost like I am I'm that. I invented sub and I am Wittgenstein. Um, language, Digi, Wittgenstein. Eris, Discordianism, it's all connected. It's all connected. I'm the high priest of Discordianism. I start my own new sect of Discordianism. When did you start your own new sect of Discordianism? I, I created the Church of the Sacred Nothing. What did you create? What did you do? Nothing today. What did you do? Wank? You have a wank today? Well done. Good job. You created something. You created sperm out your dick. Well done. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. What was I talking? This was supposed not supposed to be a joke segment. When I started recording, this was supposed to be a serious, normal segment in the video, but I think I'm slipping into mania. I don't know what's going on with me, really. Don't really know. Um, but hey, I think it turned out quite good. What do you guys think? Was this funny? Am I a funny guy? Am I, hey, you're a pretty funny guy. Am I a funny guy? Am I going to be a comedian next? I'm coming for you, James Acaster, J Doug Stanhope. I'm coming for you next. I've come for Apex Twin. I've come for Burial. I'm coming for you next. <sighs> Adam Curtis, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, Adam Curtis, with your documentaries. With your documentaries, I'm coming for you. Oh, I just finished watching the recent brand new Adam Curtis documentary, Can't Get You Out of My Head, six part, uh, like eight hour long documentary series uh, from the guy who made Hypernormalization. Uh, really good, definitely recommend checking it out if you, uh, uh, well first I would recommend watching Hypernormalization because that's a bit shorter. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely see it, but uh, this is great also. Um, and uh, if you're familiar with um, the, you know, a lot of the contemporary milieu around, you know, politics and philosophy, uh, specifically Mark Fisher and David Graeber, and to some extent accelerationism as a whole, and uh, just the sort of general attitude, maybe a bit of Zizek in there, uh, like his critique of ideology, um, you won't you you'll be very comfortable in the ideas presented let's just say that however that's not really what the point is the point is more to give a historical context to the world as we see it now and it's very well done that's a, that's a, not that that's not what i was trying to do that's what i was trying to do uh, very well done uh, very well presented lots of interesting conclusions drawn uh from china to the soviet union to the middle east to america to the uk to the fall of the british empire everything uh and it's great. It's it's just really well presented. Lots of ideas buzzing around in my head. Um, but, but, it's like eight hours of problems and then five minutes of solution at the end. And really all he says is, um, we need to Im imagine new futures, which is just the most vague allusion to Mark Fisher and a bit hypernormalization his previous documentary that you can possibly have. Uh, he just uh, like, imagine new futures, new ways of organizing society. Well, how about you present some of those? <laughs> I know he's, he's not, that's not the point, but I, I would like to, the, the main feeling, the main inside of me I was feeling after watching that was, what can I do? You know, I feel like I now I am. Well, I already understood it a bit. I understand the, this, these problems even better now than I did going in. I've been carpet bombed with information because uh, it really is just a bombardment of information and historical context and stuff. Um, I've been carpet bombed with information and 
I feel like I at least have a, a brief understanding of some of these problems that you brought up. But it's much easier to point out problems than it is to point out solutions to those problems. It's one thing to just say, imagine new futures, but we have an entire, we are currently living in an age of an unprecedented war against human creativity. I, I believe this truly, that our entire world revolves around crushing and destroying the human imagination. This is how the system keeps itself alive, because without the ability to imagine new futures, as was said in the documentary, as was said by Mark Fisher, as was said by all these people, we're stuck in the current society, the, stuck in the current organizational systems, and we're at the mercy, at the whims of um, these vast complex systems that we believe we have no control over. Of course, in reality, those systems are made up of units, of people who do have, well, depending on how philosophical you want to get about free will, but, you know, they, they ostensibly have the freedom to change their behaviors and their world around them, you know, to make a material impact on the world. Um, and so I thought I would listen. I'm just a humble, humble anarchist. Okay, I don't, I, I don't claim to have all the answers, but I would, I would, I thought I would just give a couple of little. If you've watched that documentary or you've watched Hypernormalization, um, I thought I'd just give a couple of my thoughts on, on what you can do. Now, again, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but here's a couple things. So first things first. And I cannot stress how important this is because I feel like no one acknowledges except me how important this is. Free software. Use Linux. <laughs> use BSD if you want to, but use Linux, right? Use free software. It's so important. The free software movement and the, it's, it is just, in, and all of the surrounding movements, sl slow, uh, what, the slow movement. You ever heard of the slow movement? That's an interesting one. I don't necessarily know about it that much, but it's an interesting one. Anyway, free software is very important. Why? Because, again, the world is dominated by computers right now. And the systems of control that these super powerful technology corporations have relies on them owning the technology that you use in your day to day. You are relying on technology. We're all relying on technology. Society is built around everyone being sort of reliant on their technology. And yet, if you're using Windows every day, or if you, you're using Apple every day, if you're on your phone, right, you're using a device that's owned by someone else. You do not own what you paid. You bought it. You bought it. You, you own the material. You, you, you think you own it. But really, you're just leasing it out from megacorps who really own the software that's running on your device. And what is software? Software, although people don't think about it this way, is actually a material thing because it does literally, it's transistors and microprocessors and shit, it's, it's on there somewhere. I don't really know how it works, but it's, I, I know it exists. It's not just the magic. It does exist materially. And so the material reality of your device is not owned by you. You, have, you don't have control to do what you want with it. Therefore, you are, by being, reliant on this, to the, to the, by being reliant on this technology that's not owned by you, that's owned by people who want power over you and have power over you, you're fucked. You're just owned from day one. And it's not possible to completely overcome this because of things like proprietary BIOS and uh, the Intel management system. Uh, of course, you can call boot your computers, and it's possible. I don't know. I have, I've done various researches into System76, and they, some people claim that they have disabled the, the Intel management engine. Some people claim that they have just sort of neutered it, but it's still there. Um, Intel management engine is one of the biggest evils in our society right now, in my opinion. Uh, but regardless, something is better than nothing. If you, even if you are, like, you run Linux and you spend, you use it to spend all day checking Facebook, right? That's still better than doing that on Windows. It's not like it's all or nothing. There is levels to this shit. There is levels to this shit. And one of the things about Linux is that it teaches you technical skill. You don't have to if you don't want to. It is very possible to use Linux Mint or something for for a decade without learning anything beyond sudo apt get. Right, you can, and that's fine. But the thing is that the options there, and there are so many resources. Like, do you know? It's just satisfying. It just feels good to know that my computer is running software 
that was just made by a couple of blokes somewhere who just did it and put it out for free because they are passionate and that that code is actually more efficient and secure than what can be produced by billion dollar companies does that not feel good and knowing that if you took the time you could just as easily participate in it knowing that you can just change whatever you want to change to suit your needs there is no proprietary bullshit there's no limitations on what you can do with your own computer that you own. And once you've had that experience, it feels really stupid to go back to the old way of doing things. It just feels like a massive step in the wrong direction. When you have gone into your fucking custom, uh, when you've gone into your dot config, right? When you've gone into your dot config and fucked around with some shit, even just as for no practical reason, even if it's just writing just to make it look cool, or even if it's just to change one setting in your Firefox or whatever, right? Once you've done that, and then you try another OS, a proprietary OS that doesn't allow you to do that, you feel like you're being scammed because you are being scammed. That is the way to open up the future of technology, to open up the possibility to imagine futures of technology. If you're stuck using proprietary software, there is no future. You don't own, you have no control over the future, and so of course you won't be able to sit there imagining crazy shit because you're not, you've never been in control of it. You assume, you you hand over your your imagination to the megacorps.
Oh, yes, I remember now. So the the ecosystem of these giant megacorps, right? Uh, that that basically colonized the native internet, uh, land barons, whatever you want to call them, right? Virtual land barons, extortionists, scam artists, manipulators. This is all. Well, it's all very complicated, but it's also all very simple. You just have to imagine it like it's material. You just have to imagine it like it's material. Imagine that the internet was a country and a bunch of these other countries came and invaded it. Imagine the internet was like an unclaimed um, America, for example. And then all these com companies are like the Spanish, the, the English, the Dutch, the French, whatever, um, who came over. Just Im imagine that. Now, at first, there was plenty of option to sort of coexist. Maybe there would be some scuffles, and maybe the vast military force of the colonizers overpowered the native population. But still, for some time, the native population seemed to have some level of independence. And even to this day, they're corned off in reservations where they are massively discriminated against and live in abject poverty. But they are allowed some limited independence from the larger system. Is that really where we want to be as native netizens? Sorry, that's a cringe Reddit word, but I thought it was appropriate. Is that really where we want to be? No. Um, it's not where we want to be. What we really want to be doing is setting up autonomous communities within the land owned by the colonizers. Just like if, uh, just like an anarchist squatting a house, I am squatting on YouTube because I don't make them any money, right? I assume everyone who watches my videos is using Adblock, and if you're not, you fucking should be, right? I, I, pro I sadly make Spotify money a little bit. I sadly make SoundCloud a little bit of money. I don't mind making Bandcamp money. Bandcamp, I, you know, they're kind of cool. Even though they're a, a, a company, and I don't want to pretend they're my friend, um, they, you know, they offer a good service. So I don't really mind the fact that I give Bandcamp money. That's the least evil thing I could possibly do. But I don't even give Bandcamp that much money. And I definitely don't give Google any money, at least not for my videos. What I do is I probably lose the money because I'm uploading hours and hours and hours of bullshit content that I know cool Denpa people will watch, but really is not worth it for Google. Like, I'm squatting on their land, really. I'm doing something purely for me and my friends and my community, my my little weird Denpa community, right? Um, that... Google has no fucking say in. YouTube has no say in. And yet they're basically forced by their own laws <laughs> to let me squat on their land for as many hours of bullshit content as I want. I should start uploading in 4K just to take up as much server space as possible. You know? They've given me the fucking chance to live here, uh, assuming I would play by their rules, but I don't. I don't go after views, I don't go after ads, I don't do any of that shit, not on this channel at least. The only reason I do it on my main channel is because it's music and I want to be able to live and eat. But as much as possible, I try and reject all these systems. Uh, I have ads turned on on my main channel, I don't make any money from that. Google turned the ads on on my main channel. Um, I have, I do make a little bit of money from streaming on Spotify and other services. Um, hey, I feel like that is complete. I, I feel like people who stream my music, it's a voluntary decision by them. Again, this isn't ideal. This is not the, this is not how I would want it to be. But, um, since my music is free and open f for everyone to use, released under Creative Commons, up on torrent sites, up on Bandcamp for a free download, so on and so on. If you're choosing to stream my music on Spotify or whatever, I feel like that's basically you saying, I want to give you money. That's you saying, here, take my 0 0.003 cents from, from my stream of your song. Um, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just because you have Spotify on your phone and no one's thinking about it that deeply, but that's the way I see it. So I feel like that's a choice on the audience's part, and I'm 
not happy with it, but I'll accept it. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's that's another thing is that you have to see the internet kind of like land, and you can't you can no longer see it as a sort of infinite world full of possibilities. You you can look at it more like well yes we can just simply run away and make our own ecosystems, make our own small websites and small communities away from the larger corporations, and that's great as well. But there is also space for dissent within these uh, ecosystems, for dissent within these colonized um, areas, which I don't know if they've really anticipated the power of that, because that seems like a pretty big oversight, and no one's really exploited it yet. Um, although, because a lot of the people who exploit it are themselves looking to... Uh, uh, participate in a similar system just with a theatrical element of dissent. So, for example, how videos about how terrible YouTube are is an entire genre of YouTube video uh, because they're very popular and Google is not going to shut down discussion on that because that would be a terrible PR move for them, uh, although they could if they really wanted to, and I think one day they will. Um, I think Facebook will be the first one to do it. I think Facebook will start burying, if they haven't already, they'll start burying content which says any... They definitely have started burying news that says negative things about Facebook, I would predict. But um, I think that's going to come out at some point, that Facebook has been burying criticism, criticisms of themselves, or they will start doing it, and then it'll be like, oh, it turns out everyone does it. But for now, the allowing... Criticism of YouTube on YouTube actually benefits YouTube because it makes them seem like an open platform and it makes them seem like you have options when really there's no options. YouTube has a monopoly on the online video market. We all know this. And so really, other than creating your own website, which is also a great option, um, staking your claim in the territory, just making your own autonomous zone within YouTube is just a really silly, fun idea that maybe is stupid, but I think is quite a, like a funny thought. I think it's quite a cool, interesting thought, you know? Like, how in the world does YouTube benefit from this? They get my data? This is why I lie all the time in videos and say shit I don't believe. I say shit constantly that I don't believe. Constantly. <laughs> Going back to the earliest days of my channel, I just mix in fake stories about things I've done, fake ideologies I don't really believe in, and I would mix it all up in a weird artsy veneer to uh, obfuscate the truth behind it. And a robot, an algorithm, an AI, a neural network, can't understand those artistic nuances, whereas a human can innately understand those artistic nuances. Um, I, I've been telling you I'm a genius for a long time, but I think maybe you might start to understand it now. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, next thing is, remember, we are living in a war against the human imagination, a war against human creativity, a war against our ability to imagine a future significantly different from our own, for our current world. And so to win this war, to fight this war, we must advance human creativity. We must, at all costs, allow ourselves to be creative materially because abolish art, 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 right? It's not about artistic creativity. We've reached the point where the avant-garde art of today is still pop music. We've reached the point of creative disillusionment that even the avant-garde are making pop music. Even the avant-garde are making pop music. Even the avant-garde are making pop music. That's the level of disillusionment we've reached here, folks. That's where we're at. We can't allow this to go on. We cannot. We have to stop it. And the answer is abolish art. Art is bullshit. There is no separation between art and life. There is no separation between these things. The way you live your life and the way you present your internal self are one and the same, or they could be if you weren't such an idiot. And if you choose to present your internal self and live your life and... Um, 
express your reality. These are all really stupid terms. These are all really stupid platitudinal terms that I don't like using. Just, just acknowledge that I don't like using them, but I can't think of a better phrase right now because I'm kind of worked up, you know? I'm kind of worked up after watching an Adam Curtis documentary. <laughs> Welcome to my pseudo-intellectual podcast where I get worked up after watching an Adam Curtis documentary. If you can't be creative in your art, you can't be creative in your life, and vice versa. If you live your life as a creative endeavor, creative in a literal sense, not creative as in I paint a thing, creative as in capable of creation, as in the creative nothing, as in something which arrives which wasn't there before, the result of desire. If you live your life creatively, that is, creating things, even if what you create is destruction, that's still a, a thing that was there that is not there. The destruction of something is a new thing. The, the, the destruction itself is an element, right? You do that, and then the art comes naturally. Which is why I stopped making pop music now. It's over. Never happening again. It's fun, but it's never happening again. It's fun, but it's never happening again. If you like my pop music, well, I've done enough of it now. You've, you've, got, you've got your fill. And now I'm inventing new music. I'm breaking down the barriers. I'm breaking down the barriers. Be creative in every aspect of life, right? That's the next step. Because imagining a new future, a new entire way of organizing society, is not something any individual can really do, unless you are one in a billion, one in a billion chance. And even if you are, chances are, it might fuck up, because you can't really predict how it's going to go. You might be Karl Marx, you might be like, maybe we should organize society this way, where the workers are entitled to the surplus of their own labor, and they own the means of production, and they democratically run their workplace. What if we do that? And then, and then along comes Chairman Mao, <laughs> <laughs> RKO from out of nowhere, Chairman Mao from out of nowhere. What douche? The RKO fucking Karl Marx. You never know where it's gonna take you. Sorry for all the tankies in my audience, but this is an anti-tanky channel. I'm sorry. You like Mao? Well, listen. You're not welcome here. <laughs> uh, you never know what's gonna happen, right? And so the idea that one person, especially right now of all times in history, can come up with a whole way of running society, organizing society, that will just be perfect, is ridiculous. Maybe there is no perfect way of organizing society. But as a general golden rule, opposing hierarchy and authoritarianism seems to work. It seems to work. It might not always work, but as a rule of thumb, it seems to work. That's really why I'm an anarchist. It seems to work in terms of practicality, in terms of um, uh, efficiency, and in terms of, uh, you know, r reducing the amount of people that get murdered, which I, 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 I even, you call me a pussy, call me a pussy, but that seems to be somewhat important because I don't really want to get murdered. That doesn't sound fun to me. Um, hey. I've never tried it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I've never tried it. But it doesn't sound that fun to me. Uh, and there you go. So, <laughs> why was I bringing that up? Oh, yeah. But th I'm not saying, oh, tomorrow we do, an we do a revolution. That's easy, right? We just do it. That's the thing that you just do. We just do a revolution. I know what that means. Everyone totally knows what revolution looks like in 2021. We just do it. We just walk up and do it to them. And then next thing you know, we have a perfectly run anarcho-syndicalist world. No! No, that's not what I'm saying! No! Rather than doing that, sweeping top-down changes to society, I'm sorry, anarchists, I'm sorry, anarcho-syndicalists, but your anarchy involves a top-down change of society? Hmm, a little bit suspicious there, a little bit sus. Oh, that's a little bit sus you've got me there. Instead of that, we should focus on creating small anarchies in our local communities. And by local communities, I don't mean going outside. Bleh, disgusting. I mean friends, really. I mean friendships, connections, 
artistic collaborations, small anarchy is there. Because just like capitalism pops up whenever you try and crush it down, so too does anarchy. Single authoritarian hierarchy, unitarian power, right? It's a myth. It's really a myth by the OGU, the One God Universe, right? It's a myth of monotheism that has been sort of memed into culture that it's possible or sustainable. But it's never really existed. For example, you could right now just go outside and break a law. You could do it. You, you could go outside, get in your car, and just drive on the wrong side of the road while drunk. You could easily do it, right? And the only way for the state to stop you is to literally violently arrest you with fucking armed police. That's the only thing they can do, because their system doesn't work without them just threatening violence all the time. It's a shit system that has never really been real. It doesn't work. Do your friends ever pay attention to laws? Oh, remember when they made drugs illegal and then no one ever did drugs again? Remember when, you know, like, the, it happens all the fucking time. It just doesn't work. It's never worked. It's never been real. But it does have incredible military force. It does have incredible violence at its side. It can use violence and not just physical violence, but all forms of violence, psychological, implied uh, or implicit, uh, etc., type of violence to enforce itself, which we don't have on the underside of society. We don't have at the bottom, right? And you, uh, okay, okay. Oh, little middle class boy thinks he's at the bottom. Compared to Jeff Bezos, we're all at the bottom. Let's remember that real quick. There's no infighting happening here. You can infight, that's fun. That's fine. You infight as much as you like. But just do it somewhere else. Do it somewhere else. All right? Listen, I have much more in common with, you know, pe regular people from, mid from, up from upper middle class to lower working class, right? From homeless, uh, mentally ill people to uh, relatively wealthy white middle class type people. I have more in common with all of those people than I do with Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg, right? Combined, I have more in common with those other people. Even though they might be vastly different types of people, we still have more in common. This is known as class solidarity, right? Remember this shit, people. Remember this shit. It's not hard. Anyway, small anarchies can just pop up wherever you want them to. And they actually don't, like, they do it naturally. They don't need to be coaxed into existence. They just happen because of the nature of human relations. And noticing the small anarchies and embiggening them, empowering them, giving them real force behind them to change things, that's a good start. Here's a small anarchy. I'm not being told to do by Google Terms of Service. I'm not going to show my dick, but that's not because of YouTube. I would show my dick if I wanted to. doesn't matter if I got, you know, I'm not going to get banned. I don't give a shit. Right? I just showed cop uh, here, copyrighted content. Let's find, let's find a movie to watch, shall we? What's a good movie? Avengers? Avengers. Avengers. Here we go. We're watching Avengers. Right? I'm not going to find a fucking stream right now. But you know what I'm trying to say, right? I don't give a fuck about copyright or any of these censorship bullshit. Copyright censorship. Let's acknowledge the fact that copyright is censorship. Real quick, let's just acknowledge the fact that it's a limitation on free speech, and then we'll just move on. Let's just acknowledge that copyright is censorship, and then we'll just move on past that, beyond that. Move on. Okay. I don't give a fuck about that shit, right? This is a small anarchy. We did it. We did it. Now, it exists within a world full of hierarchy. That doesn't stop it from being a small anarchy. Not big anarchy. We haven't taken over half of a city and are distributing food to the poor. We're not doing that. We're not redistributing the wealth. We're not living without rulers. And we haven't switched to Bitcoin yet, right? We're just making dumb YouTube videos. But it's an exercise in creativity, raw creativity, I hope. It's, on, it's not possible to really know, but it's possible to try and know, and that's what's fun about it. That's the fucking joissance. What is it? What is it? Jo, jo, fucking joissance. Fucking bitch. French fucking...
Jouissance. Jouissance. That's the jouissance of it, my friend. That's the jouissance. When you make weird fucking music, right, you're not actually directly challenging power. I know a lot of musicians love to think they are, especially punk people. They love to think that avant-garde music somehow directly challenges power. It really doesn't. But that's not really the point. The point isn't to change the world with your music. I don't believe it's ever happened. I don't believe it's ever Some people think that the protest music of the 1960s was... Uh, it was a major part of the of uh, the protest movement and the anti-war movement and the leftist movements, etc. I don't believe this. Never have believed it. I only believe art reflects culture, right? I uh, and our culture right now is a culture which limits creativity, which is running a war on the human psyche. And so our art is beginning to reflect that war. Again, the avant-garde is making pop music. You've got avant-garde artists like Sophie working with Beyonce or whatever, right? Rest in peace, Sophie. The avant-garde is making pop music. It's not their fault. Because music is a reflection of whatever society is created in. Art, it reflects society, because society and art are one and the same. They're one and the same. In the same sense that Art Deco stylings are the politics of the 1920s. They literally are it. And you can see it with your eyes. Brutalism is communism. That's why I love brutalism. <laughs> uh, right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Don't bother engaging with these fucking algorithms, right? As Adam Curtis said in that documentary, all of these platforms, social media, YouTube, whatever, are created to encourage these like high emotional states because those are the ones that get people to share and stay on the platform for longer and see more ads and have more data collected about them, right? So, for example, a, a post that makes you angry or outraged or feel or cute or laugh, whatever, these things are high emotional states. They're exceptions to the sort of relatively neutral, dull emotional state. You know, they're, they're exceptions. They're high emotional states, right? High agitation states. And those are the states, especially outrage, to get people to talk about these things and directly profit the companies that own the algorithms which promote these outrage posts and uh, ideologies. Now, they don't know why they're doing it. They're just algorithms. They're just AIs. They don't have an ideology. But we have an ideology, and they play on that. They feed on that. So the solution to this, firstly, is to be critical of ideology itself. The ideological supermarket, just like any other supermarket, is fit only for looting. Secondly, is to avoid doing this bullshit. Stop getting into dumb arguments on the internet, especially on major social media platforms. What are you going to achieve by arguing with a stranger on Twitter, especially in public? If you want to have an argument with someone on Twitter, DM them. Say, hey, I don't want to do this in public. Can we do this in the DMs and have a reasonable discussion? And if they say no, then just don't talk to them. And if they say yes, as, as it's happened to me, I've done this multiple times, you can actually have a reasonable discussion when you're not in the court of fucking public opinion. You're not get, having like battles with each other's posts as if how many friends you have determines how accurate your ideas are, right? When you're doing it in the DMs, you're not benefiting the Twitter algorithms. You're just having a, communi a com conversation with another human being over the internet. And you'll suddenly find that the context of your discussion allows you to communicate more sensibly. It's a crazy thing, but just don't get in dumb arguments on social media. I don't think any of my fucking viewers are getting in dumb arguments on social media. You're smarter than that, but don't fall into the trap because you, when you do that, you're directly profiting Jack Dorsey. You're directly profiting Zuckerberg. All of these people are directly profiting off of your emotions. They're like vampires, right? <clears throat> now, Capitalism is an artificial intelligence. Here is a key point of accelerationist theory, right? Capitalism is an artificial intelligence. The events we're experiencing right now are retro, retro causality from a future superintelligence, which is what capitalism will evolve into 
retroactively causing itself. That's what you don't understand, but that's what I understand, right? And so, what do you do in that situation? Do you resist, embrace? That's basically the two options. Resist, deceleration, embrace, acceleration, right? The answer is um, anti-praxis. You just sort of chill. You just sort of, um, you don't just sit back in armchair and just let it all happen. That's not the case at all. That's definitely not the case. Remember that sabotage is a big part of acceleration. That's what you do. You do that. And you can resist. Um, because the, even though everything is set out temporally, um, uh, the, the ultimate conditions are still affectable by humanity, regardless of free will. So small anarchies will pop up because capitalism is actually um, not that inherently authoritarian. It is inherently authoritarian, but, for example, without the... Uh, the post-fascist states that we live in, right? Um, as in the states that came as a result of fascism uh, or the ideas of fascism. Um, capitalism could be less authoritarian. Um, and uh, the less authoritarian capitalism is, the more readily small anarchies can pop up, like mushrooms in a field, right? You pick them, you eat them, and they're delicious. That's the great thing about anarchies, is they taste good. And so, regardless of capital's intelligence, right, all it knows how to do is perpetuate itself. That's what intelligence really is, and create itself as a super intelligence in the future, right? Um, it, it knows how to bring itself from the future. It, it, um, okay? It knows how to do that stuff. It's smart. Capitalism is an AI. I don't know if you, if you never read Nick Land, you might be sitting there like, whoa, mind equals blown right now. Impossible. Impossible meme in the comments. You might be sitting there typing that out in ASCII. Well, listen, Buster, get ready. Get ready for the future. Whew. But it's, yeah, it's it's complicated. That that stuff's complicated. It's not necessarily about any of that. It's not necessarily about any of that. It's more about um. Uh, it, it's it's not necessarily about fa you know. I am a nihilist. I'm an, an a nihilist anarchist, right? I'm not I'm not a utopian. I refuse to ever like acknowledge the existence of a utopia. It can't exist. If you even theorize about it, if you demand utopia, you're an idiot. Fuck you. Don't demand utopia. Utopia sounds shit. I don't want to be in a utopia. Fuck you. Right? That's not the point. Never been the point. <clears throat> Exercise your creative muscles. Build unions of egoists with your mates. That's what it's all about. What do you think a union of egoists is? What do you think that is? That's a loving relationship, my friend. My brother. That is a relationship. What do you think that is? That's a relationship. Build relationships that aren't based on money as much as possible. Build relationships that are based on power and cultural influence, such as Denpermob overtaking the internet in our small corner, propagandizing capitalism into anarchism, causing schisms with our brand new autisms, right? That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Don't endlessly fragment, right? Endlessly fragment. Endlessly fractalize yourselves, okay? Do you understand? I don't think I'm commun- I, You see, at first I was doing very concrete ideas, and now I'm slowly descending into uh, fractalize yourselves, capitalism is an AI, read Nick Land. This is how my thought processes always end up, but it's fine. Uh, and finally, I want to say, there is no harm in researching magic. <laughs> There is no harm in researching the occult, right? There is a reason that the occult exists. There is a reason the occult exists. And it's not for edgy teenagers only. It is also for edgy teenagers, but it's not for them only. All I'm saying is, read the Corpus Hermeticum, okay? Do your own research. You have access to it all, but take everything with a pinch of salt. 
the Corpus Hermeticum is not as old as a lot of Hermetic people would like to have you believe it is. It comes from relatively near the birth of Jesus Christ, right? It's not really that much of an ancient source of wisdom. Doesn't mean it's not a good book. Still can be a good book, right? Um, a lot of these things are interesting. But don't get wrapped up in ridiculous conspiracy theories. Only true conspiracy theories. Research Discordianism. Do all that shit, right? That's what it's all about. That's where it's all about. Not what it's all about, that's where it's all about. I said that on purpose, you might think it was a slip of the tongue, but I know what I'm talking about. And fight the battle for creativity. That's important. Fight the battle for creativity by creating small anarchies where creativity is the currency. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about ideas or none of that shit. I'm talking about, like, something that doesn't have a name, something that doesn't have a word for it. Something that doesn't have a word for it. Something that doesn't exist yet, but it will be brought into existence. So it won't even be brought into existence. No, 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 that's the wrong way of thinking about it. It will arise in the future. There you go. That's much better. Uh, Google this guy. Hold on. Let me find his name. Uh, um, uh, give me a second, guys. Google... Uh, uh, Eric Wargo. Google him. He knows what he's talking about sometimes. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he types about some bullshit. But what's important is to distinguish those two things. I chat a bunch of bullshit all the time to distract the algorithms and because I'm an idiot and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. And I think it's funny. All of these reasons combined, firstly, I'm just wrong and an idiot. Secondly, it's funny. And thirdly, it fucks with Google. All of these things are positives. Being an idiot is a positive. Funny is a positive. Killing Google is a positive. All of these things are positives. Lay them into your life. A final note with regards to capitalism, AI, and uh, free software is that it doesn't make any sense for AI-run capitalism to generate proprietary software. Uh, it literally it doesn't make any sense. Uh, therefore, the free software movement should only expand um, if we assume uh, the current trajectory continues. Remember, uh, Linux has doubled its market share in the last few years. Uh, again, from only 1% to 2%, but the, that only really matters if you think that Linux is ever going to be the biggest operating system in the world, which I don't... Sorry, I don't believe and I don't want. It doesn't matter. What matters isn't that everyone uses Linux. What matters is me and all my friends use Linux. What matters is me and my my community use Linux and free software as much as possible. Uh, and the smart people who develop software, smarter than me, much smarter than me, who develop the good free software that works, is secure, and uh, is uh, minimalist, runs well, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, um, <clears throat> use free software and aren't poached by big technology giants to work on bloated proprietary bullshit. And it does, again, doesn't make sense for AI capitalism to, uh, for, for techno capital to generate proprietary software. Um, it just doesn't, yeah, I, I can't think of how it makes sense. Something important to add on to my manic uh, explosion of Adam Curtis is uh, the forced happiness that that um, you're you're not allowed to not feel content with the current state of things. You have to pretend that everything is okay. You literally do not have an option. It's not acceptable to be sad. If you're sad all the time because of the world is fucked, oh, you're diseased, you're, you have depression, you're, there's something wrong with you, right? If, you, if you're sad on the job and not smiling all the time, your boss might have a go at you for uh, not fucking smiling all the time. You, you have, if you are with friends and you start talking about, uh, or not friends, sorry, but like, you, you get the point, right? There's a very weird, strong societal pleasure to just smile all the time. 
which is just absurd. Everyone knows it's absurd, and yet no one does anything about it, right? Uh, this is like this weird bounce back that came where all the teenagers and everyone was like super obsessed with suicide memes and whatever, because even that doesn't escape it, because it's still, haha, <laughs> isn't the fact that we're all depressed funny, smile about it without a serious discussion of the... But there doesn't need to be a discussion. The, the discussion's happened already. We know why we're all depressed without any solution to the problems. And one of the scariest things about... that, that I think I was feeling recently about art is that the artistic... Uh, is the art, music, and especially the artistic avant-garde was one of the last places where you were allowed and encouraged to explore sadness and to say, no, actually, I feel like shit, and so do you. And now, even that is going away and being replaced with a sort of nostalgic fake happiness brought back from fucking 9-11 era American um, uh, popular culture, which is just kind of baffling to me. Now, there are some people who manage to sort of deal with this tactfully, like my friend Young Ethernet, who, while they make music that is, like, inspired by the early 2000s, ostensibly, like, positive, this sort of thing, more so inspired by sort of Lil B, um, rather than, more like, more inspired by, by Lil B, Space Goes Pop, uh, and sort of broken side and anime theme tunes and such like things rather than like Kesha or whatever. Um, but the way Ethernet does it is, is in a more visceral and um, g genuine, oh, what's the word here? Authentic, authentic manner. That, that when, when you listen to an Ethernet track, it's not merely, um, hey, isn't this danceable? In fact, I don't know if you could dance to an Ethernet track in any way other than autistic spasming, um, which is by design. This is, this is Ethernet's genius. Um, uh, like, you, you, can't, you can't dance to this shit without, in any way other than autistic spasming. But uh, there is no illusion of oh how happy we all are there is no feel so clean like a money machine right the actual subject matter of these songs is often really dark it's like a dark a, a really it's like a really weird surrealist dark comedy it's it's almost a, a, an acknowledgement of this fake world where um well, if we're all going to be pretending to be happy in music, then I'll just rap and sing about things that are completely non-existent. Like, talk about selling bricks outside Osaka, for example. I don't know if, if that song even ever got released. Um, but, so, like, many of these Ethernet bars are just complete fictions, right? It's more like a fictional storytelling rather than any reflection of r reality. There is no feel so clean like a money machine, right? They're, because no one actually, if you feel so clean like a money machine, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Get the gold fuck off, right? If, if, if you feel, like, empty, if you feel like, uh, like the, the whatever the weird complex, infinitely complex emotion of Coco with the Extendo is, where, where this manic combination of absurdism, depression, lo-fi, nostalgia, but also futurism, all combined into one, like, that's, the, you're my friend then. Like, that's the good shit. Give me more of that shit, you know? Like, this sort of neurotic compulsion that Ethernet has to just constantly make music is, like, ultimate beauty. It's, it, it's like, Sorry for sucking dick of my friends here, but it's like um, a perfect antidote from within. It's an agent on the inside um, to this weird forced happiness, because oftentimes it's not forced happiness. It's just whatever it is. It's, it's funny. Like, it's funny and silly, or it's hard. Like, it, it makes you bob your head. But it's never, like unabashedly happy, almost never, um, which is really interesting to me. Like, f 
f- funny is not the same as happy. In fact, funny is often the exact opposite of happy. If you look at com- comedians in the vast world of comedy, so much comedy tends to deal with the darker aspects of life. You know, Ethernet will talk about raping a bitch or something. Like, one of Ethernet's funniest songs is literally about Princess Bubblegum raping or being raped or raping Marceline. I forgot. It's been a while. It's over the Ben 10 theme tune, right? Which is just complete absurdity nonsense. It's almost dada. Like, it's just nonsense. And it's nonsense specifically that deals with, like, it's not nonsense about a, a, a stupid horse. It's nonsense about, like, human relationships and, like, abusive relationships, deeply abusive relationships, but framed in such a completely absurd way. And it's a perfect reflection of society's unwillingness to deal with reality and our sort of uh, dreamlike, trance-like... inhabit inhabitants within this world of forced happiness um where where you can't even really acknowledge the stuff that's funny about it because you can't acknowledge it in the first place we've been sort of seeing the praises of adam Curtis right now but uh let's be actually critical for a minute here because i don't agree with him on everything so adam curtis believes and he literally says this that what we need as a world is a return of big or brand new big political ideas this is what he says big ideas that sweeping ideas that people will be willing to give up their individuality for and lose a little bit of themselves for uh, in order to be part of something bigger than themselves that that is the solution to today's political turmoil that we need big political ideas and He says people on the left are scared of this because they saw what happened last time reasonably with the Soviet Union and and so on, and China, whatever, that when when we have these big um, massive mass movements of political ideas, well, so far it's never ended very well. Sometimes there have been minor victories. Uh, and positives, but but most of the time, in fact, a lot of the time, it's just not been worth the risk that we've had some terrible things happen because of it, and that so we're scared of it now. Now, that's true to an extent, and even he says that's reasonable. Um, but I am skeptical of the idea that a big sweeping idea would even be capable of existing in modernity or post-modernity, whatever you do, in now, right? I I just don't think it's true. Um, I, I don't think it's true that people, that people would be willing, especially in the West, to give up a part of themselves to be part of a mass movement in the same way that it used to happen. Um, because uh, I, I, I think people are very skeptical um, and I, I think people, I, I don't know if, if a big sweeping idea like that is necessarily what we need anyway. Like, I don't know if politics can be solved with, ah, just have the right idea and then, and then do a revolution or whatever. I think that the, there are, pro, there are, revolutions are not a fun time. <laughs> They're kind of a messy weird way to go about things like if you look at the french revolution the archetypical revolution like many 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 innocent people were killed it was kind of a terrible time and what did we get out of it liberalism capitalism eh was it really worth it eh eh mild improvement over feudalism a little bit but uh in some ways right a little bit of an improvement over feudalism do we really want to do it again? We've tried it. Interesting. It was interesting. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> did, it, did it even solve much? For the amount of death it caused. Um, and the idea of like, oh, well you do it to make the world a better place for tomorrow. This is a very progressivist kind of way of looking at the world. Full of these weird meta-narratives. 
I don't. I'm skeptical of meta narratives. I don't. I don't think that. I mean, I think there is really one defining meta narrative of the of possibly all of human history, but at the very least, the modern era, which is technological progress. That is a very clear, very prominent, very influential meta narrative that you can follow and expect that it will continue on its trajectory. What's weird about it is that humans are in control of that. Like, in theory, at least. Like, imagine if all the people in the world got together in a big meeting and were like, yeah, you know what, no, we're doing, we're doing anarcho-primitivism. We're just going to stop, te- we're just going to stop working on new technologies right now. We're just going to stick with what we already have, stop working on, like, it could theoretically happen, but it never will happen. I don't know why. I don't know what the weird power is that drives us to create new technologies all the time or to progress technology all the time, but we don't. We can't seem to be able to uh, get out of it. And I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. Really, technology is a manifestation of intelligence. Like, uh, uh, technology is really just tools, right? It, basically, when I say technocapital is an intelligence, or when Nick Land says that, we can talk about how technology is a manifestation of intelligence. So, we often judge the intelligence of species by their development of tools, right? We say that, like, the less intelligent species are incapable of tool usage, and when, it, when we find that a species can use its tools, we're like, wow, that's really impressive, because it is literally a product of a desire which is born of intelligence, a creation um, of something outside of yourself to assist you in your um, desire, right? And to do that, you need to have at least awareness of some possible kind of, like, you know, yourself and your limitations of yourself in order to understand that you can extend those limitations. Like, if you're a crow using a twig to get a grub out of a hole in a tree, you have to you have to understand the fact that you have the limitations of the, my beak isn't long enough to reach this. And then I have to understand the fact that um, a twig is long enough to reach this and I can pick up a twig in my mouth and reach, like, therefore you have to understand that the twig and you are separate, but you can, so it, it's a, a product of a higher intelligence than, than, you know, lower, it's a product of um, intelligence of some kind. And therefore, the more complex our tools get, as time goes on, the closer they come to a manifestation of intelligence, until eventually you end up with artificial intelligence. In a sense, I say computers are already intelligent, technology is already intelligent, computers already have a desire for self-preservation, in a sense. Computers already have, and technology already has, a desire for reproduction. It already exists. They are alive. They may not think and feel in the same way humans do, but they can solve problems. They have um, many things which biological creatures also need, such as energy input and output, waste, all sorts of stuff. Reproduction, all sorts of stuff. Um, that's an that's a meta narrative, right? See, that's a fucking meta narrative, not a oh, communism. <laughs> because there are many count. Like, I don't know if you can counter argument the production of the the uh, te- technological progress as a legitimate meta narrative for our history, but you can easily counter. Um, many other meta narratives with with lots of other stuff anyway what's what matters here is that the idea that oh you just have a big sweeping a great idea and then everyone will jump on board it and change the world that's a very utopian way of looking at things a very enlightenment type of way of looking at things um that that uh and it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just kind of boring and outdated um the idea that oh one needs a cause bigger than themselves to give their life meaning you're probably right most people probably do need that but that how fucking that's so boring and a lot of people already have that without needing a grand political struggle right like a lot of people 
would come up with their own weird motivations for living. And maybe maybe they're um a lot of people already give up a lot of themselves for no reason anyway. Like we're working. People just accept the fact that you give up most of your life to make money for your boss. People just seem to accept this like it's nothing. Because it's it, it's sort of non-ideological, <laughs> you know, like they 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 don't see it as as an ideology. They just see it as the truth, the objective truth that that's how the world works, um, not something you can change. And although they all know, like people, if you if you actually sat someone down and got them to think about it, they they know that like the world doesn't have to be that way, but they just don't do anything about it because what would you even do? And there's no idea that can solve that because there is no answer to that question. What would you even do? There's no singular answer. There are, there are too many possibilities and they're all rhizomatic, you know? There is no simple idea through which, which sprouts like a tree, you know? There is no root idea that then p political change grows out of. Um, there never has been. That That's a retroactive um, narrative. That, that's not something that existed. That's something that exists when you look back at the past. That's not something that exists at any single point in time, I mean, in my opinion, in my interpretation of history. Um, really, things are much more rhizomatic. Uh, and I, I don't know if Adam Curtis understands that. Or maybe he just maybe he would have a a, a solid counter argument to me. Um, I assume he would because he seems like a smart guy. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that that that's necessarily a good thing. Like I don't necessarily think that giving up a part of yourself to be a part of a wider uh, movement bigger than yourself is w what humans need. A lot of people seem to just sort of accept that as, oh, well, that's what humans need. I just don't kind of buy into it. I've never felt the need for that. I've never ever in my life felt the need for that. So maybe it's just me that doesn't feel that and everyone else does, which would be really weird. Am I not a human? I hope not. Like, I, I just don't buy into it. I, I, I don't think I ever have. Like, there are certain movements that I would sort of consider myself a part of, something like free software, for example, or anarchy or um, experimental music. But none of those are I'm part of because I want to be part of something, you know? Like, I, I don't really, I'm not actually a part of anything. I don't talk to other anarchists about anarchism. I just happen to be friends with some people who also share similar ideas. But we, like, I don't participate in the anarchist milieu, if that's what you're asking. I don't do any political activism or anything. I don't write about politics. I don't really discuss politics outside of a, you know, jovial conversation with my friends. I don't know anything about free software. Like, I don't know how to program. I don't really discuss free software other than promoting it because I think it's a good, efficient idea. It's a great way to have technology. I think it takes power away from people who shouldn't, people who don't. Uh, it takes power away from people that need to have their power taken away and gives power to uh, me and people who use free software. But I'm not really in it because I want to be a part of a movement bigger than myself. There's no movement... The, the movement doesn't come into my mind at any point. The point is the thing, the 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 sort of the technology itself, the material free software, not the movement. I don't care about the movement. I wish it didn't exist because it just brings drama and stuff. Um, uh, what else was the other example? Oh yeah, avant-garde art. Like that's just music I like and music I happen to make because it's what I like. Uh, I, again, I other than my friends who it's really just a coincidence or because we have similar interests um, I don't at all feel like I'm part of a wider movement in fact I feel like I'm going against the wider movement I feel like I'm constantly fighting the movement uh, uh, of modern musicians I def and, I, and all of these things none of them make me depressed or anything like these things are completely fine by me I don't feel the need to have my life defined by something bigger than myself um, doesn't matter to me, just not important, never has been. A lot of people always talk about searching for meaning in life, but I have never understood the question. <laughs>
the meaning of life or a meaning to your life, a greater purpose. No, these seem like meaningless platitudes to me. Um, like, what do you mean a meaning to life? Life is just a word. It, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it has many meanings. It has many definitions depending on how you use it in context. A pub, like, and none of that makes any sense to me. I, I've never understood it. I don't think I ever will. Um, no, definitely hasn't been desirable particularly. Um, my main desires in life right now are, um, well, I hope everyone I'm friends with, it, well, I hope all my friends and family are okay. That's the one thing I care about. I hope they're all doing okay, and I hope I'm doing okay. I hope I'm not starving to death, or I, I hope I can continue to make music and avoid uh, working a, a job for as long as possible. Um, by whatever means necessary. That, none of that is involved in the wider movement. I don't like wider movements. I don't understand them. They're full of people, and I don't understand people. Is this just because I'm autistic? Is this whole thing just been me saying I'm autistic? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. That, I, I just, I don't, and I, I, I personally choose to believe that this is like, how most people think. I might be wrong, but I feel like this is how most people think. And um, they, they, uh, they, there's no idea, a single idea, that would be, you know, that, that, that we're all too skeptical for that these days. Like, there are many political and philosophical ideas that I really relate to and really agree with and have changed my life like Wittgenstein or Capital Realism or uh, Sterner, all these these people or, you know, all of this stuff that have really changed my perspective on the world. And um, yeah, the, that's it. That's all it's done is change my perspective on the world. Like, what am I going to do? Uh, go fight a revolution so that we can get rid of the name theory of language? <laughs> <laughs> fight a revolution and make a statue of Wittgenstein? No, not going to happen. What, what am I going to do? The, the, none of that makes any sense to me. Um, I, 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 I think destruction is good. I, I think breaking down as many structures of, of, of well, it's too complicated to get into. Read Blessed is the Flame. But, um, I, I don't have any problem with that, and I I, I think it's fine. Uh, but I think... Um, now, I don't know if I am using this term correctly, but I'm just going to use it anyway. I, someone can tell me in the comments who's read Deleuze <laughs> if I'm using this correctly. I think re-territorializing um, uh, certain <laughs> spaces within capitalism makes more sense to me rather than fighting a revolution like uh, and this is definitely not to say it's non-violent that's not that um, I'm not a pacifist by any means um, or deterritorializing. De what am I trying to say? I think deterritorializing um, certain modes of uh, well, social relations, media production, um, and spaces, uh, both virtual and physical, is uh, more important and more practical than old-fashioned uh, organized revolution for multiple reasons. Firstly, the surveillance state and surveillance capitalism um, slightly disarms and, and the massive military force of states like America um, makes violent revolution improbable. Uh, especially organized violent revolution. Uh, disorganization is one solution. 
and that's where I am. I'm doing that solution, but I'm not trying to do a terrorist attack or anything. Like, I don't know what that would achieve. Um, <clears throat> what am I trying to say here? Like, what, what, are, what are you trying to say, Adam Curtis? <laughs> like, give me an example of a big idea that's worked. Like, none of them ever work. And if the idea is to, to improve society for future generations, well, I don't give a fuck. I'm never having kids. Um, I, I would rather improve society for me and my generation and my friends and family. Uh, you know, and I, I, I feel like that's how everyone is. I don't think anyone is going to want to 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 change society for the betterment of future generations when imminent climate catastrophe and AI disaster means that there may not be that many future generations because it's already too late to revert these things. Like you could argue that 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but you can't argue that anymore because there is no future. And it's not just there is no future we can imagine, it's that there physically is no future, that our future has been denied so many, so many times that none of us can conceive of even if an idea that good came along, no one would listen to it. It probably already came and went. No one would listen to it and no one would, it wouldn't work. No matter how many people actually want change, no matter how many people want ra real radical change and would be willing to go for that, you know? Adam Curtis says these people that would be willing for, to change uh, would, do really need change in, uh, and are willing to lay their lives on the line are going to the right rather than the left. Well, of course they are, because that's an outdated model of society, that big ideas change everything when people get into mass movements. And the conservatives are all about outdated models of society. So, of course, the right absorbs those people. And, of course, more authoritarian forms of quote-unquote leftism absorb those, absorb those people. That just, makes, that just makes sense. Am I making sense? I hope so. I don't agree w with what I said earlier. Um, rather, I just phrased myself badly. It's not that I'm against the concept of revolution or insurrection or radical change in that sense. I, I, I just don't. I, I would love to see it, in, in fact. It would be great. I don't see how it can neg like, uh, I don't see how it can make things much worse. I mean, it could, um, depending on who's doing the revolution and who gets in charge afterwards, more importantly. But, uh, uh, I'm I'm definitely in favor of that sort of thing. Again, if you read my political inspirations like Desert and Blessed is the Flame and The Coming Insurrection and all of these things, I think you can pretty clearly see what I'm talking about. Uh, however, I am just skeptical of I'm just I'm just overly skeptical of everything. Like I, I'm skeptical of an, uh, uh, the ability of those to produce real change. Uh, I'm skeptical of the ability of, of like revolutions to produce real positive change. Um, I'm, I'm more support of the, uh, these acts as almost a form of performance art. Um, again, for the um, uh, jouissance of it of it all for the the sabotage rather than um for political gain i think that's just a, a game really a game a game played by ideologues and there's nothing wrong with them nothing wrong with games i like games but uh I don't know. I'm having a lot of ideologies right now, having a lot of conflicting thoughts. On the one hand, you got my leftist origins, a workers' revolution. On the other hand, 
my anarchist insurrectionary leanings, nihilism, um, and jouissons. And on the third hand, my more recent accelerationist thought of anti-praxis and uh, uh, post-humanism. So we got all three of these conflicting ideas fighting inside of me, and uh, it's very fun. It's a lot of fun to be involved in. I think more people need to do this. You know, maybe this is the actual solution that Adam Curtis is looking for. Not just leaping on whatever ideology promises the most change the most quickly. I think that's silly, actually. I think what's actually important is to know how to process as much information and data as possible. And only autistics are capable of this, really. Or people who are, you know, Adam Curtis presents in, in, in that documentary about how the world is, is sort of being turned into a Boolean system uh, where everything is run like a neural network where they understand well only the relationship of data to itself but not any narratives that come with it whereas humans understand narratives very well but are shit at processing data while i'm terrible at understanding narratives well i'm not terrible at it but i like data more um and perhaps we should simply embrace that rather than trying to resurrect a dead idea although it's possible that individualism it was just a weird phase and whatever comes next comes next Skinner Box Universe um, hmm lots of interesting thoughts uh, yeah alright so I, I, I change my wallpaper to this ultimate super comfy thing Oh yeah, the 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 mania of dying down from from my Adam Curtis documentary. Um, by the way, tell me tell me I'm not I didn't even realize what was going on here until just now. How far? Tell me anyone else is based enough to be watching Thomas, the classic era, and reading X at the same time, while talking about their Linux race. Do you know anyone as based as me? Do you know anyone as based as me? The answer? No, clearly you don't. So I just did some minor things. Uh, the first thing I did was make the gaps smaller between my windows, which is both a positive and a negative. On the one hand, it adds a lot more tension to the design of the whole thing. Um, but on the... Uh, yeah, which is not that comfy. But on the positive side of things, it maximizes screen real estate, which is nice. Um, and I don't think it's too tense with these, these six gaps. Um, I, I think it's still fine. Um, yeah. And the other thing I did was I changed the color of the... Well, I made a new GTK theme here. You can see it in my Matrix client. This won't be my matrix client for long. I'm going to switch to a terminal-based one. Um, but yeah, I, I've changed the window border of the active window to a nice gray color. Uh, where it used to be pink. Uh, and I changed my GTK theme just to give it this, using the orange from this image. Uh, that's all I did. Yeah. Um, was I going to say anything else about that? Oh yeah, Matrix. I want. I want to try and convince my friends to switch to Matrix, and maybe use Jitsi for voice communications. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, I just I I can't really ideologically reconcile my dependence on Discord with my aversion to proprietary software. And I feel like my friends are cool enough that they will just come with me. Now, they might use Discord themselves. They might, like, not completely abandon Discord themselves. Hell, I don't think I'll completely abandon Discord. 
but I feel like we can move our private discussions over to a free platform. Um, like I, I, I fail to see any possible negative consequences of that. Um, it's just a matter of who can I convince. Uh, and, uh, well, this is where I begin convincing. <laughs> begin Operation Convince My Friends to Move to Matrix. Um, yeah. I've been reading more Mark Fisher recently and watching some of his lectures and talks and stuff. And he, uh, I did, I wrote a comment on YouTube about this, uh, but like a long time ago on, on on one of his talks but no one saw it because no one has watched like it has like a thousand views or something anyway what matters is i'm just gonna basically continue that here so mark fisher accurately describes the sort of um artistic failings of our current generation not not by any fault of our own but by necessity of capitalist realism that um the production of the new is incredibly neutered, uh, which I, I, I in arts, uh, and uh, well, we see the results of this in the arts, which I believe is is somewhat true. That like uh, you can see it very clearly in movies, uh, you know, action movies. Some of the the greatest action movies of all time, for example the films of John Woo or um, Jackie Chan are like these incredible like artistic fucking masterpieces with the height of everything. Everything was poured into these movies. The Jackie Chan movies have the best stunts, the best choreography, the best acting. The f what the fuck was that noise? That came from inside of my nose. I don't know if you could hear that. The inside of my nose just made a weird noise like a steam train. That was fucking wild. My sinuses just fucking expelled smoke like a steam train. Anyway, um, you know, the Jackie Chan, they have the best stunts, they have the best choreography, the best comedy, the, uh, the best stories, and then, like, the most compelling hero's journey narratives. The John Woo movies, they have the most insane pyrotechnic special effects. Gun battles that just go on forever with insanely thought, well thought out um, cult choreography an entire fucking narrative an entire epic is told with the fucking just just due to the way that a gun battle is composed shot and edited uh and performed like it, it's if you've never seen a proper john like one of the proper chinese john Wu or jackie chan movies if you've only seen their western work please i implore you go back and watch some of them because they are amazing um <clears throat> they're just some of the height of all fucking human art. Uh, and nowadays, <laughs> we've we, we got Avengers, uh, John Wick. John Wick is, is, what if I made an action movie, but the stunts actually are like, we put like the most basic thought into them, basically. Like the choreography. You know, we're, we, we are so in the West, especially in the Hollywood cinema, we're so used to just lackluster fucking stunt choreography, you know, from the Bourne Ultimatum onwards, because the actors are on insanely tight schedules and they probably don't care anyway uh, enough to learn complex choreography or they don't have the skill to do complex stunts because they were hired to have their name on the poster uh, so they could draw crowds not because of their skill or action uh, you know whereas John Wick movies directed by a stunt coordinator and uh, hired what's his name Big Chungus Keanu Reeves who has experience doing stunts uh, and therefore they are they can put the most basic thought into their fucking stunt choreography that should be the norm like that shouldn't be an exceptional wow aren't the stunts in John Wick so good isn't the choreography and gun battle so good that's just we put some thought into it we actually sat down and thought about it instead of just saying uh, instead of just writing in the script and then a fight happens you know that's the most basic shit or the Kingsman franchise it's like oh we we actually put some thought into the set design and camera uh, and uh, cinematography of our stunt scenes that's it that's that's all we did and yet somehow that's like a masterful thing and it look i like both of those things i like john wick i like kingsman the first one i haven't seen any of the others but i like the first kingsman movie i like the first three john wick movies i haven't seen the fourth one um they're good movies but you 
can see how it's of a significantly less innovative, less like the 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 Chaoyong fat like um, John Woo movies. That those John Woo fight scenes are John Woo fight scenes. They have a clear artistic direction. They like you cannot deny it. They are like a complex dance. It's insane. Whereas now the the uh, level is we just put some thought into it, which is still impressive <laughs> for for this day and age. But uh, you know. And that's the case for a lot, lot of different media franchises. That it's more, merely just a reproduction of the old rather than an innovation. Except there is genuinely new great art coming out, but it's in 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 the capitalist realism type period, right? Video games. Video games is an art form. Sure, they may have been invented before the 2000s, but they really only came into their own. I mean, there were some amazing games that came out before the, two, the year 2000, like Doom or Half-Life or... Um, uh, what's the one by Bungie? Uh, b -b 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 what's it called? Marathon, I think. I think that's what it's called. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, like there were great games that came out, but really video games only came into their own after the 2000s, particularly with the indie games... Uh, technolo the technology being accessible to independent creators there is amazing artistic innovation happening in video games constantly and it has been for years like there isn't you you might think like oh there's just a, a billion first person shooters like oh everyone just reproduces the same fps's and sure the big companies they tend to do that but they don't always do that like for example, CSGO, I think, is probably one of the most polished art pieces that humanity has ever created because its audience of millions will not allow it to be anything else. If CSGO isn't the most polished, isn't perfect, if it isn't literally perfect, there will be massive outrage in the CSGO fan base. And rightly so, because there is often millions of dollars on the line in competitions and thousands of hours of people's time they've invested in this game. Um, you know, they are rightly pissed off if it's anything other than perfect. And try and compare the difference between CSGO, uh, between CSGO, between, let's say, uh, Half-Life 2, um, uh, uh, Spec Ops The Line, and, uh, I don't know, Halo, and, uh, let me think, uh, Control, right? These are all shooter games, right? First or third person. But they're completely different. They're basically incomparable to each other. CSGO is basically a sport more than a game, like, like more than a, a narrative piece. It's not a narrative piece at all. It's it's pretty much just like a like football or something. Uh, control is like this weird fucking Lovecraftian, uh, like d d David Lynch thing uh, with like psychic powers and insanely cool art design. Then like Half-Life 2 is like this narrative piece uh, with like well thought out action set pieces without any cutscenes. Uh, and then like Spec Ops is like this weird meta commentary on the Nate on popular video games. Like there's a, there's a whole like none of those are even really comparable to each other. Halo is a sci-fi, you know, epic. Um, none of those games are really comparable to each other, despite all being technically shooters, right, in the same genre. And then, even beyond that, you've got wild fucking artsy shit coming out of the indie scene, like Papers, Please, which, you know, I, I wish Mark Fisher had lived to pay, play Papers, Please, because I think he would have loved it. Uh, or uh, A Short Hike, or any of Kitty Horshow's games, or... Um, you know, even The Witness or something. All of these crazy... Or Undertale, for example. Like, these are crazy, genuinely new takes on art. That uh, And this art form has only developed in recent memory. Sure, there's cynical stuff like Fortnite and the, and the mobile games that is just awful and atrocious and disgusting representations of, like, the worst parts of capitalism... But there is genuine artistic creativity going on. And there always is, no matter what medium. Like, there's still loads of great films coming out. It's just mainstream cinema that has sort of gone to shit. Even recently, like, 
Once Upon a Time in America and The Irishman came out relatively recently. Like, those were both great films that I saw. Um, uh, And other than films, there's still good TV coming out all the time. Twin Peaks, The Return came out relatively recently. I haven't seen it, but I can tell you for a fact that it's definitely new, original, weird fucking art that doesn't have any place existing logically under capitalism, right? Uh, And uh, beyond, you know, music even though I'm incredibly skeptical of the direction that the musical avant-garde is going in, uh, there is still great music coming out all the time. Um, Too much to even count. Uh, I can't even begin to discuss the the great music coming out because it's just too much. And there's also loads of interesting artistic stuff which you might not even call artistic if you, depending on how strict your definition is, in software. Like... um, is my fucking desktop device an art piece? Like yes, no, maybe. I mean, it's an, it, it, it's 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 sort of something else, but it's also like it's art, but it's also practical. It's, it's more like design rather than art, which is still cool. There's all sorts of interesting stuff. Okay, architecture, nothing interesting going on there. No one's made a good building in forty years. <laughs> no one has made a good building in forty years. I will I will gladly admit that and across the entire globe, not a single person has made a decent looking building in the last forty years. Um, but hey, listen. It's it's cool. There's still good stuff going on in in the realms of art. You can't. No no one can actually kill it, and because it, it, you can only drive it deeper underground. But you can't kill it. Even no matter how fucking fucked everyone is, there's still going to be good shit coming out. And it might get harder and harder to imagine something new. It and it, maybe there, it will get to the point. But I think there is some optimism to be had there. That 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 um, the video games are like proof of that there is still room for innovation, genuine innovation um, in art, um, even under the worst of capitalist realism. Uh, Particularly like uh, during the pandemic, working on an indie video game by yourself is something you can do from home without dying from a plague, right? Like, you see lots of interesting stuff. Like, even, even Half-Life Alex, for example. Like, that's a whole... Uh, VR, I, I didn't even mention VR. Like, that's a whole new fucking art form in itself, really. And Half-Life Alex is, like, a whole artistic thing. Like, that, the, the bottle shaders in Half-Life Alex that were added after the pandemic started because one of the people, one of the Valve um, programmers was just bored at home during the pandemic and just decided to program this fucking insane really cool never seen before technology that allows for like water to like a very lightweight uh, shader that allows like liquids in bottles which is really cool like you might think that's stupid but it's, it's like when I first saw that I thought it was the coolest shit I've ever fucking seen I still think it's in- insanely cool um yeah well that's three episodes in hours probably into this video I should probably start explaining what's going on so what's happening here many of you probably weren't around for the beginnings of the no thank you channel uh many of you probably haven't gone back and seen those old videos but i'll give you a bit of context so back in the day i used to have this phone right and in a fit of paranoia rightful paranoia, correct paranoia, but paranoia nonetheless, I had unscrewed the everything from it and taken out the front-facing camera because I thought people might be able to hack into it and use it to watch me. Which is true. That is something people could theoretically do. People being governments and so on. Right? And so I removed the front-facing camera uh, only to then lose that front-facing camera um, and not really want to put it back anyway, which meant that I didn't have the option to film my face unless I wanted to turn the camera around, in which case I couldn't see the screen, so I couldn't check if I was recording, I couldn't check my framing, it was all a big hollow blue, so I thought, so I ended up just not filming my face. I ended up just filming, just holding the camera out and just using it as a microphone, essentially, um, right? Which is basically what these videos have been anyway, or have been too. And that's what my videos ended up being back in the day until that phone broke and I ended up 
reusing this phone that I'm currently on, which is an old phone, which does have the front-facing camera. Now, again, in the days of those old videos, the classic error of no thank you, um, I got to a point where I was recording a bunch of videos and sometimes putting out a video or two every day. Um, and that was a bit much. I thought, I don't want, when, when I see someone I'm subscribed to that just posts constantly, I end up just sort of getting overwhelmed and uh, just finding it annoying. Uh, you know, spamming my sub feed, essentially. I was like, I don't want to just spam people's sub feeds. So instead I started recording videos, but then instead of just releasing them separately, I would just re record until I had a bunch of them and then just release them all at once, edited into one video. And that's how I developed this, this style of video, right? But then as time went on, I got kind of bored making that type of video and I wanted to experiment more with other stuff. And I got my front-facing camera on this phone. So I didn't want to stick to that style anymore. But one of the things that used to be the main principle of my channel is sort of filtering. And I've always been a strong believer in media that gatekeeps itself, right? So I, I've always said if you feel the need to gatekeep your communities from uh, normie invasions, Right, then the problem is that whatever your community is based around can be invaded by normies. No normie is going to watch my fucking two hour long video recorded in the lowest possible resolution where I don't show my face and it's just talking about weird fucking concepts that most people wouldn't even listen to with a solid production budget, you know? It filters itself. So we never have to worry. I've never had a problem with that sort of thing. Never had a problem with, as Lily put it, uh, Yoshika Mieko Reds on my lawn, right? That's, that's just never been an issue with me because I, I filter myself without needing to gatekeep. Um, so that's one reason. And another thing is that um, sort of whatever you want to call it, the spectacle, I guess, is a uh, there, there's something that it can't really handle, which is ugliness, right? And Plunder understands this that um, uh, there's a certain form of ugliness that um, can be appreciated by a human, right? But not it, it not only fil it filters out because it's such an effective filter. It also filters out capitalism. <laughs> it filters out, you know this beauty imperative, I'll call it, right? There's there's this beauty imperative, you know, there's so much pressure on people to be beautiful and to produce beautiful things that, like, uh, we end up doing things that are actually terrible for the sake of um, beauty, uh, a narrative of beauty. So, be it skincare products and, and uh, beauty products, makeup and such like that people spend, uh, particularly women, spend lots of money on and then lots of time both learning the skills to apply makeup properly and actually applying the makeup properly to the point where they might be too tired to effectively concentrate in school or at work or whatever in their life. They, their life literally takes a negative effect because they feel the pressure to have perfectly applied makeup and they probably take pride in that sort of thing. And so they're spending money and th their time. You know, I know, I used to know back in school, many girls who went to school with me who would get up early just so that they had time to do their hair and makeup. Uh, and then they'd be fucking tired, really tired all day in school because they didn't get enough sleep because they had to get up in time to, you know, be beautiful. Um, and uh, the sort of art that gets made tends towards uh, whatever is most uh, immediately non-ugly. The sort of narratives that get formed tend to be whatever avoids ugliness as much as possible. Um, and websites operate fucking awfully from a user experience end. They fill a bloated JavaScript that slows down your web page and takes ages to load because they they care more about how they look uh, and giving this illusion of a uh, 
of the non ugly narratives behind them that uh they actually sacrifice their usability and privacy to achieve that. And YouTube videos are the same way. And so here's me fighting back against that with my full on ugliness as much as as much as you want. Right? Um and another thing about this ugliness and the filtering that it produces is a sort of distillation of audience. So my channel has 400 something subscribers. Let's just say it has 400 subs subscribers, right? That's more than enough for me. At the start, there was times when I th would put a bunch of effort into it and only two people or so would see it or something, and I would think, that's not worth it. But I am perfectly comfortable if a hundred people see something I make. That's, there's no way for me to be sad about that. Um, and I feel like it's worth it. And let's say that I have 400 subscribers and only 10% of those people actually care about what I make and watch all my videos and pay attention and so, and so on. That's 40 people. 40 people is that's not just a random bunch. That's a community. 40 people, that's a tribe. You know, that's enough to be, be something tangible, to do something tangible. Uh, so even if only 10%, and that's being conservative, if my audience actually gives a shit, that's a whole tribe that I've got there, right? And I would rather increase the ratio of tribe members to outside um, onlookers than just increase the level of onlookers. And the best way to do that is, is through this sort of um, going against the beauty imperative. Uh, yeah. There's also the matter that I'm just not going to outdo myself when it comes to well-produced content. I am not going to improve upon Denpa and the Sacred Cow. I mean, Denpa has its problems. I think the Sacred Cow is pretty much great. And I think Denpa, its high points make up for its low points. Um, I'm, bo I'm very proud of both of those projects. As of right now, after I finished making Denpa, I had a bit of a crisis because I realized the only way I could improve upon Denpa is to just make actual short films. Just like narrative, just start making cinema, no, no longer just whatever this is, right? And that kind of fucked with me. And so I uh, just no longer really want to do that, you know? Not that it fucked with me, that's not really right. It's just that I thought, well, I've done that now. I've done the artsy, long-form film type stuff that I did before. Let's just go back to everything minimal as possible. Just me talking to you in my room while I'm going a bit insane. Let's just do that. Just strip it back to its most minimal functions and see who sticks around. Because those are the valuable people. Not to me. They're not. It's not like you're fucking consumers of my product. There is no profit incentive here, right? There's not even really a dopamine incentive. I honestly, I check the views on my music and stuff. I never check the views on my no thank my my uh, like on this channel. I never check. I check the comments, but I never check the views or likes or anything. That doesn't mean anything to me. Um, the comments mean mean things to me because it means someone's actively engaging and it's like a conversation. But views and stuff never mean anything to me on this channel. They only mean stuff on my music because that's my source of revenue, source of income that I sort of need that to you know, have a have a uh, career or a job or to be able to eat and pay rent, right? That, but on this channel, it doesn't matter at all. Um, views and stuff. So there's no, it's not that you're consumers of my product or whatever. It's, it's about um, just art for art's sake. It's, about, it's not even necessarily about art. It's about me just sort of being a street preacher, right? <laughs> just manically raving 
into a microphone on the corner of some fucking uh, street. Uh, what matters isn't anything other than the fact that I get my ideas out there. Um, and uh, hopefully you share similar ideas or very different ideas. That's what's important, is that hopefully you have completely different ideas to me and you can challenge me and uh, make me escape from the filter bubble that I live in on the internet because remember most websites they feed you things that you want that they think are similar to the stuff you've already watched so you end up sort of in this cycle in this bubble I think that's what's good about 4chan even in its current neutered state is that the filter bubble doesn't exist on there or at least to a lesser extent than say Twitter or Facebook or whatever, or YouTube. And this, I think, breaks out of the filter bubble too, because no, I don't know why people watch this shit. I have no idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, I feel like somehow it interrupts that cycle. I don't really know how, but I feel like it might. And also, of course, the third reason, I mean, the fourth, whatever the number we're on, the next reason that I already explained is that I want to clog up um, YouTube servers as much as possible. I want to make my claim on the land that is uh, Alphabet Industries or whatever they're called, right? I just want to make my little claim. And the best way to do that is through raw, just throwing everything, just making everything there. Just put it all there, just put it there, leave it there, just everything, put it there. Just as much as you can get, as fast as possible, just leave it all there. And then that 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 way, it's there. And now I don't have to deal with it anymore because it's all over there on Google. It's all there, and now it's their problem. Fuck you. I could make a peer tube, right? Peer tube isn't a viable alternative to YouTube. Let's just get that out of the way right now. Peer tube is not a viable alternative to YouTube. Well, let's go deeper into that. It depends on what you mean by viable alternative to YouTube. If you mean, is it a place you can host videos on the internet, then yes, it's a viable alternative to YouTube. But that's not really all that YouTube is. YouTube is much, much more than that, and PeerTube is not those things most of the time. Um, it can sometimes have some of that functionality, and in some ways is better, but it's also lacking a bunch of functionality and stuff that makes YouTube a unique ecosystem. I hate that. I hate thinking of it as an ecosystem, because it's really not. It's just a fucking website. I think here... Um, do I have anything else to say? I don't think I have anything else to say. I just want to add out on a random, completely unrelated thought to the end of this conversation, um, which is that the, 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 the importance of the Unix philosophy, the idea that a program should just do one thing well rather than trying to do everything, um, which I guess is why PeerTube exists and is good at doing that. Um, like, I think that's good, basically, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think as much as possible, that's a good way to do things. Like, Discord wants to be a, a like a, a text message type thing, a group message, like IRC, and it wants to be like a conference call thing, and it wants to be like a social network, and it wants to be like something for gaming somehow, which I don't really understand any of that functionality. No one uses it that I know. And it wants to be like a video call platform. It wants to be all these things. And that's why, you know, they say Discord is where internet communities go to die because it, it's a one singular centralized platform that just fails pretty much at every step. And it kind of doesn't. Like Discord works well which is what's fucked. <laughs> like, if it worked not as well, then it would be cool. Because then I would have a very excellent reason to convince my friends and to convince myself, more importantly than my friends, to convince myself to have the motivation to, like, dedicate to moving to Jitsi or whatever, right? But it works well enough that I don't need to do it. And that's what's tough, is that even though you don't need to do it, you sh should still do it. Yeah, I think maybe the solution here is not to move to a pre-established platform like Matrix or whatever, but maybe for me to make my own 
live board. I'm thinking about this recently, that because there's a live board communities on the internet that are really cool, and I feel like I would fit into that. Well, I mean, I'm already in, in that community, but I feel like my friends might fit into that. Like, Denpo Mob might fit into that. Like, our whole shit might fit into that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this whole shit that you're part of and I'm a part of and, you know, that. Like, I feel like that might, that might fit into it because we all have, like, image board backgrounds-ish. Like, we're all adjacent to that sort of sphere, I, I think. But we're also, like in the, the the sort of underside of the internet type sphere, right? They're also in the, like, uh, hipster, like, that's too mainstream type of side of the internet, right? And I feel like maybe live boards are a good platform for that. I, I want to just briefly talk about another completely disconnected subject, which is the way that SoundCloud's structure as a website encourages the birth of what we see as modern music. So firstly, SoundCloud is shit for albums, right? SoundCloud is not good for albums. No, no, albums don't do as well as singles on SoundCloud. This is a known fact. They just don't. So SoundCloud produces a singles market, and that makes sense. Albums don't really make any sense in a digital world because albums existed due to economies of scale. You could release a single on a vinyl, or for not much more cost, you could make a slightly bigger record and fill it up on both sides with much more music. And the shipping cost is almost exactly the same. The production cost is only slightly more. The labor cost is barely even negligible, right? Um, and to the consumer, would I rather pay money for a single or an LP with two or three songs on it? Or would I rather pay a tiny bit more for a double-sided album with like 10 songs on it? It makes more sense to buy a, an album. But in digital, there is not that distribution problem. It costs the exact same, really, to host an equal number of single, singles for a website as it does to host the same number of tracks in album format. It doesn't make any difference to the website. Um, and it doesn't make any difference to the consumer because there is no longer, I have to go and spend money to buy this album. It's just streaming. So albums don't really make much sense anymore, especially for SoundCloud. And um, the mechanics of SoundCloud mean that uh, it's kind of like YouTube where clickbait thumbnails and titles are important and so the musical equivalent of the hey guys what's going on before this video started make sure to remember to like and subscribe the audio equivalent of that is to have a loud 808 play immediately when you start the song the perfect example of this is look at me by Sentacion. the song starts halfway through the chorus immediately then goes back to the intro which is a predecessor to the modern YouTube video where you get a highlight from halfway through the video at the start to keep you watching and then the actual video starts. Have you noticed that this is a trend in YouTube videos? Perfect example would be Corridor Digital's um, VFX Artist React series or um, Among Us YouTubers do this all the time. Uh, Minecraft YouTubers do this all the time. That they'll put a clip from the middle of the video or the, the climax of the video right at the beginning to sort of get you invested and then cut to the intro to the beginning of the story so they start in media res and now we have songs that do the same thing um that even i've done it with few but i did the same sort of thing um soundcloud encourages that uh and loud 808s are encouraged rather than uh gradual build-ups because you have to capture the listener's attention long enough for them to care to listen to the whole song if you have a song with a slow build-up, this is something I'm guilty of because I like slow build-ups. I think that the best build-up in any song, the best drop in any song of all time, sorry, I think everyone in the planet fucking agrees with me here, the best drop of any song in all time is fucking... I can feel it coming in the air tonight because that song comes like five minutes into the fucking song like the the whole song is built up and then that's why the drum fill is so powerful and the drop is so good everything is so good because you have this long tension build up ah you can't get that if you have to attract attention instantly at the start of a single which will be seen by you know people scrolling through their feed and they just want something that seems interesting and all they can see is the waveform the title and the thumbnail right 
no one's really figured out how to do SoundCloud thumbnails yet, really. Like, people, some people try and just make them memes. Some people make them anime images. Some people make them album cover art. No one really knows what they're doing. Uh, it, it's, it's just sort of a wild guess. And no one knows whether, and you know, it's fucking wild. Um, and another thing about SoundCloud is that it, again, has a recommendation algorithm. Uh, so, you know, if you like this, then you'll like this type of algorithm to get people to stay on the site for as long as possible. And so you get a system where most people are encouraged to re to um, reproduce what's already been popular rather than innovate and make uh, experimental music. So when someone makes something experimental, um, there's suddenly... Uh, the other people that make similar music will get a boost in popularity because it's all feeding into each other, right? But that means that there isn't an encouragement to be on the outside anymore, um, which is interesting because you would think that would go away with music labels, with record labels, but actually risk-taking is minimized um, for people who actually want to become successful musicians. Um, it, it might be even more homogenous than it ever was uh, when the only way to distribute your music was through a label, because at least then you could rely on a label head that might be, or an A and R man or whatever, that might be having a good day and decide to take a risk on you. There is no such thing as an album that decides to take a risk on you. Albums will only make decisions that they're sure will work, and the only thing they have to base on is what people have liked already. So, there you go. That was a complete tangent. That, that, see, that could have been two different clips. Could have been three different clips. But I just did them all in a row because these are the ideas I have in my head. I don't think I am going to make a, <laughs> a real-time image board. Um, I just don't have the skills to do it. Don't know what I'm doing. That would be neat. But uh, I think there's better alternatives anyway. Like, I don't see why a Jitsi or Matrix or any of these other things couldn't serve equally well. Huh. Going back a billion hours to when I was talking about grinding music that sounds like the future, for as modern underground music sounds like it's from the present, there is still underground music it sounds like it's from the future at least there is definitely other examples for example like young good like sad boys and uh dream gang shit at least to some extent sounds like it's from the future definitely i would say like there's a nostalgia to it but i would say it definitely sounds like it's from the future maybe not our future but some sort of possible future and I guess it is our future, as it turned out. Uh, but, it, yeah, that's how it sounded back in the day. Uh, and you, you, it's possible that to some extent, like the current, uh, what do they call it, like Digicore, like uh, Surge, you know, like like RCB and whatever. Bit, but the people who bit crush their vocal tracks, I don't know what it's called. Like, not the entire song's bit crushed, but just the vocal tracks bit crushed. Like, that style, um, although it sounds a bit too, like, it's, it's a little bit from the future. It's, it's a little bit forward thinking and forward look, forward looking. It just takes someone to combine that with shoegaze and then, which, which might be me. But I don't know. I feel like that's too similar to everything. I feel like I want to get away from all of that. But that that if someone combined that with shoegaze, like that's maybe I should give it a try. What harm can it do? As long as it can't be mistaken for pop music, that's all I fucking care about. <laughs> as long as it can't be mistaken for pop music, I'm a, I'm okay combining that with shoegaze. As long as it can't, I mean, I already combined it with pop, uh, not pop, post punk, uh, uh, like, hmm. yeah. I, I feel like I, I, I know. I see a parallel there. I see something interesting. And me and the Ethernet album, uh, which I might just release, I need to ask Ethernet about that. 
you know, we we making moves out here. Moves are being made. I think the key thing about Young Lean that's from the future is the song Vault, right? You know the song Vault by Young Lean? The one that goes, Heart, heart, heart of a liar, liar, heart departed from my soul. Thanks to everyone who hates me, only makes me fit my wall. You know that one? Well, And it's got this four on the floor beat that goes, boom, 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 boom. It's like a fucking hard style song. It's insane. It's so cool. And nothing else sounds like that song. Nothing Young Lean's ever made. Nothing, that, uh, I think that's made by Young Sherman, I don't remember, has ever made. Nothing Drain Gang's ever made. Not, no other song in history has ever sounded like that. There's one song. If you want that vibe, if you want that sound, you have one song. And that's Vault. The only thing I can think of that comes close, even close to it, is... Saw It Out Sharon by Wiley, um, which if you haven't heard, is a great song as well. Um, but, but that's also very different. Like, that's also a completely different type of song. Uh, like, that that's like a dark kind of techno song, where it's like, vote, or like a tech house. I don't really know what it is. Uh, like, it's, yeah, it's a bit tech, like tech house, uh, whereas like Vault is like doesn't have it's, it's, there's no genre like it's 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 own it's just the song Vault by Young Lee there is no like it's it's got the the like monotone rapping in like one note it's got the and like vocal glitches like the way like ha 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 no the lying and lying you know like the repeating things that sounds sick and it's got the like poof, 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 poof on the floor kick pattern that then turns into a trap like yeah and then it's got like since what the fuck is that like those synths don't appear anywhere else on the planet nothing else sounds like the song Vault by Young Lean nothing Young Lean ever made after that and Listen, I like a lot of Young Lean's other stuff other than Vote. That's by f- that's like the rest of that album is great, but the rest of his discography is, you know, has its ups and downs. Um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of Dodd Mark, his like punk project. I'm a big fan of his noise project, which I forgot what it's called. Uh, but if you didn't know, Young Lean has a noise project, which is also really good. Uh, uh, I'm a you know, I can. I'm. I'm not as into Jonathan Lean doing one two seven or whatever that one is called. Like I, a lot of people really like that music. I am not so into it. Not really my thing as much. But the song Vault is just a special place in all of music. I wish I had the capacity to make. Like I would love to just make an album that sounds like Vault. But I have two problems with that. Firstly, I don't know how. Like, I don't know how you make synths that sound like that. I just don't. Are they even synths? It almost sounds like someone's speaking. It's like, I don't know how I don't, my sound design is just not there. I, I do not know how you do that. I have no, wouldn't even know where to fucking start. I could make something maybe similar. But also, I'm not Young Lean. And one of the things that makes that song is Young Lean's delivery and persona and aesthetic. And that's not my, that's not, none of that is me. Like, my lyrics don't sound like that, my delivery doesn't sound like that, and my aesthetic doesn't look like that and feel like that. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I Someone else needs to do it. I could produce it for someone else. I'm not going to rap over it. I'm not a rapper. I don't rap well. My voice doesn't fit rapping. I've tried it. I don't I don't like it. Other some some people seem to like be able to be okay with my rapping for some reason. But I have every time I've tried to rap on anything I've just felt that it was cringe and awful. Uh so I I don't I you know, I even a lot of songs I've made that just like sketches I've made on like on my own that I've never released have me rapping in it that I just never release because I they're cringe like at my even if the lyrics are fine which uh, you know I'm an average lyricist I would say I'm not the world's best at, at writing lyrics but I I can do a good enough like just about pa- possible job uh 
but my I, my voice just doesn't suit rapping. Um, yeah, nothing else sounds like Volt. I want more music that sounds like Volt, and I don't know how to get it. What do I do? What do I do to get more music that sounds like Volt? It's almost like Volt is almost like I don't know. It's like everything that you want in music, in electronic music. Like it's like everything, man. It's it's a brain computer interface in musical form. It's it's ah. I wish. I, I wish there's more stuff that sounded like that song. Just like, ah, uh, it's there's sometimes there's just like something that there's like there's only one song that sounds like Vault, and there's only one song that sounds like Do Dear by Crystal Castles. Those are like the two songs where I'm like, I wish this was an entire genre, and and I built my early mu- music because I wanted to make Do Dear an entire genre. Half of no thank you volume two is me trying to make Doe Deer a genre and not really knowing what I was doing and not doing it very well. Uh, I, I Now, I, if I wanted to, I could do it. I have the musical skill to do it. I don't want to anymore because I've already done it. Uh, and I feel like it, um, it could be interesting. Maybe I should go try some of that, actually. But the thing, one of the things about Doe Deer is that you need a female vocalist and for technical reasons as well, like for the frequencies of a female voice and I guess I can pitch my voice up and that might work um, maybe I should give that another shot because that suits me, my persona a lot more than Volt does um, but yeah like those two songs are always the two songs where I've been like nothing else this artist has made sounds like this and nothing else anyone else has ever made sounds like this the closest you can come to Do Deer is Cat Bambino's discography, and I I I really like Cat Bambino, but none of it none of it's quite Do Deer. Uh, Do Deer is just such an amazing song, like that's real cyberpunk. Uh, man, I I wish I could bring music into existence that was separated from myself, so that I could listen to it. You know, like, I <laughs> not have to make it. Because sometimes I can't make all music, uh, even as much as I want to. Uh, I just can't. Man, Vote is such a good song. I, I just listened to it, if you're wondering. Because I was talking about Young Lean, and I was like, I'm going to go listen to Young Lean after just talking about him. So I went and listened to some Young Lean, and, and now I just listened to Vote. And I was just I'm reminded of how fucking genius that fucking song is oh my god everything about it is so good I can't there's no faults to that song every element fits perfectly the music video even is fucking sick it's like way darker than Young Lean's other stuff and way more electronic and like I, 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 I don't know what to say. Sounds like that's music that sounds like the future. That is not a nostalgic song in any way. That is not harkening back to any era. That is not the early Young Lean stuff that harkens back to the 90s vaporwave aesthetic. That is not the modern SoundCloud stuff that harkens back to the 2000s. That is not even stuff that reproduces the modern sounds of pop music, modern pop music or, or modern anything music. That is just its own fucking beast. That makes such a weird fucking thing, right? Because the fact that it breaks is, like, part of the appeal. Like, um, there are just work distros, Mint and Pop OS, for example. Like, things that just work. But when you want to do something to, like, take advantage of the customization that Linux gives you, like, that's what you need. If, you, if you're going to use Pop! OS, for example, or Mint, like, you, you're, sure, you're taking advantage of the, like, some of the stuff that is separates Linux from Windows, but you're not really taking advantage of the true power of Linux on those sort just by being a Surface user, which is fine. Like, most people don't need that sort of power. But if you want to go deeper into Linux, like writing, for example, um, 
then stuff will just break and uh it'll it will break whenever you try and do something so like if you if you just install Manjaro for example like stock and you just don't do anything really with it except browse the web or you know do basic stuff everything will work completely fine out of the box forever um most of the time mostly but as soon as you try and like do something weird with it do things special with it linux will just be like uh it will just break and then it will be like well this is your fault for trying <laughs> like well oh you didn't want it to break oh you didn't want you didn't want to fuck up well then don't try and do it then like don't try stop trying and the joy of Linux is when you can say, no, fuck you, I am the master of my own computer, and fix it. That's what's so great about it. And then you, you go on a bunch of research and you learn about how computers actually work, and using that fucking skill and knowledge, you fix it, and then you get to go, fuck you, Linux. And then Linux sort of goes, I knew, I always, it, Linux is kind of like a, the rival character, where it's it's like... It, it's like it tells you like this is your own fault for even trying <laughs> you know and then when you eventually come back stronger than ever before and you finally defeat it it's like at last you have surpassed me <laughs> i'm proud of you son it's, it's like some sort of like cynical master character it's pretty great this is what i like about it i will henceforth be referring to our current modern present system as capitalism and the system the similar system which Marx analyzed a hundred years ago as proto capitalism. Holy shit, this video is four hours long. Okay, we're ending it here, we're ending it here, we're ending it here. Goodbye. <laughs>